Yeah. But then when you're in those clubs, right, you have to deal with what they would call a twink. Right. Now, take a 10 out of 10 girl, right? Mm -hmm. And then times it by 100 in mm -hmm. terms of sassiness, bitchiness, or like overt rudeness, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Not every pretty girl is like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty ladies out there, I'm not referring to Amy's that. not like that, just so you know. For everyone watching and listening, Amy is in the fucking building. Yeah, Amy, <laughs> Amy, Amy was dope as, dope as shit. And today we've got, well. uh, yeah, oh, she's thank you. This yeah. is why I'm starting to send Amy down to get everyone, you know. All my guests now are greeted by Amy. <laughs> you know, is that like nice, beautiful smile? And for those that are listening as well and watching, I don't mean to interrupt you, my bro, good, but um, bro. It's the, I like to call this guy, yeah, fucking um, the, the, the fucking the beast. Like if if the rock wasn't a person, I would call you the rock. <laughs> like if like if that if, like if, if that wasn't a dude, you'd be the rock, dude. The rock I from South Africa, wish, you know. I wish, bro. Um, but it's none other than the fucking best, right, motherfucking Ivily. How are you, sir? Peace. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good bro, to see I'm you good. again, man. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So nah, you're we're okay. talking about so this, tell me about twinks yeah, so and all like, this stuff. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What you get? Maybe the terminology is wrong. So any gay dudes out there, feel free to correct me. Yeah. But like a twink. Is like an extremely, extremely sassy gay guy. Right, right, right. right? Like so very you, like elaborate. Yeah. And I've seen twinks destroy pretty girls who like no one could come near in terms of how bitchy and nasty they were. Oh, okay. Just utterly dis dismantle them. And I was like, oh. Yeah. And then I had to come into contact with them as well, right? And some of them hit on me and they wouldn't take it well when I said no. Yeah. So the bitchy, snide, poisonous remarks come out. Yeah. And that's where I really started to refine my communication skills. Because not only did I realize how it felt to be a woman mm -hmm. if you go into a bar and you're pretty, mm -hmm. but I also understood, you know, how to deal with very, very disagreeable females and such, mm. you know? And it was all just like, if you want to be honest, it's exposure therapy. Like you yeah. just expose yourself to this and... People will go, well, what about rejection? I was like, that's the whole premise. You get rejected more times than you get taken. And that's the premise is you need to be impervious to it. Yeah. You know, so you can just, if you see someone, you can go and approach them. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to come to fruition. And that's the problem with dating apps now. Mm -hmm. You'll get a bunch of beta incel males who wouldn't go up to you in the street, mm -hmm. talk to you, mm -hmm. giving you attention. Mm -hmm. And they may look good and stuff via picture and, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is on Tinder. But I don't know how it all works. Mm -hmm. Right. But then you'll meet this guy and he may be a fucking narcissist. He may be a fucking psychopath. He may just be just a weird dude because you just can't actually socially interact with someone of your caliber. Yeah. And that's why I think old school is the best. And old school is the new new school for anyone asking out there. Trust mm. me. Any girl would really appreciate that more than she would a little fucking slide DM with big eyes going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, to me, ah, that to shit me is that's creepy. insult energy. Like, yeah, I, think yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's the most beta male shit there is. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think that is though? Like, because I feel like, I, I think I've even talked about this on the podcast before where I said that sometimes it feels like it's better for a woman to, like I've said on the podcast before that you need to understand the energy that a woman is sending your way before you approach her. In the sense that you can't just approach a woman. Like it's not, it's nothing to do with the fact that you're going to get rejected. It's more to do with the fact that you can't just go talk to certain people. You just have to kind of like see if they're giving you the same energy. Are they looking your way? Do you remember that time me and you went to Jalu? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, right. We wanted to bring up Jalu. <laughs> so <laughs> we went to Jalu once. I heard you talk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now that you've said that, I'm going to have to like monitor how I say this. <laughs> so you and I went out once and we saw some pretty women. And we said, you know, because we're boys, you know, we decided that we were going to speak to them. And that's exactly what we did, but it's, it's in the way that we approached them. And do you remember what happened that night? As soon as we went up to talk to them, they were immediately receptive because <clears throat> guess what? They'd been looking at us as well. Yeah. They'd found us to be cool. Um, I think they were Spanish. And I said to one of them, um, would you like to dance with me and my friends? She was yeah. like, we've been looking at you all night and we were actually waiting for one of you to just come up and talk to us. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. And then it came and over. Call, my coat exactly. Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. And that happened. And, I, and I, you know, I've always said, because I feel like in a world today where men are sometimes terrified to speak to women, mm -hmm. I don't even know where that comes from, mate, you know? I'll explain it to a Talk to me, team, bro. Talk right? to me, bro. So what is it? It's essentially two things. Right. So it's both a grinder and a needle coming at you from opposite ends. So what you got is a feminization of men. Okay? Yeah. So you got men being feminized. And then on top of that, you've got them being rated, being berated for being feminized. But then when they try to be men, they get berated for that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Right. Number two, there's a culture now of over entitled people. Um, unfortunately, the large majority that you see online are women. Mm -hmm. 
and I have no disparagement towards them. I actually love them. You can't live with them. You can't live without them. Mm-hmm. They're imperative, and they're very, very beautiful people, both inside and out. But with that being said, you also have this other side where essentially you you see there's a, a guy called Joey Swell does this best, right? Right. Where <clears throat> someone will be filming in a gym, right? And someone may walk across the tripod, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, "Oh my god, what a gym creep." Or something mm-hmm. like this. So now what you've got is a culture of guys being like, if I walk up and speak to a girl in, let's say, a gym environment, if I walk up and speak to a girl, she's going to be like, she's going to have a fucking phone. I'll be like, look at this fucking gym creek. Yeah. It's like, darling, yeah. you're wearing leggings. You look great. What's wrong with someone coming to approach you? Yeah. Right. Firstly. And secondly, which is a notes on a lot of these videos. Right. And if you're a big girl, I'm pretty sure you know how to say, hey, I'm busy working out. Yeah. And if you're an immature child, you don't. And that's okay. Work yeah. on your communication skills. <laughs> <laughs> right? But with that being said, what yeah. you then get is guys who are good dudes yeah. being like, you know what? I don't want this smoke. I don't want yeah. this nonsense. Yeah. I'm not dealing with this shit. I don't want to be me too for just yeah. speaking to a girl. It's like, I'm a good dude. I just, if I wanted to go speak to a girl, or if, for example, so some of the videos are, are so bad, dude, like where a chick would just be training. So let's say you're training over there, Amy, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm training over here. Right, and you're squatting, and I look over to look for a 20 kg plate, and then on your phone you're going, "Look at this gym creep, fucking stare at me." It's like, no, you're in a shared space. <laughs> mm-hmm. People can look, like you can scan. It's completely okay. Yeah, and you know, men and ladies as well sometimes get ripped apart for that. So then what yeah. you get is these dudes who are going, "Well, well, fuck this, like I'm not going to do that," mm. you know. But when you feminize a dude, you got a real issue on your hands both for males and females. Yeah. Know? That's why the resurgence of masculinity is so prevalent and people will just latch on to any strong yeah. masculine leader they see. Yeah. Because it's just not there. Men just don't want to smoke. Mm. And this is why I was saying on the pod a while ago is, is that like, I think that sometimes it's better when you can feel the energy. Because like, if you see a girl, for instance, at the gym and she's maybe been looking at you or yeah. you, you get this sort of like inclination that she's approachable in some ways, mm. then you go over and talk to them in it. Yeah, and that's so, that's a bit, because otherwise then something might happen that is not what you're looking for. You know, she just yeah. has to feel in a certain kind of way towards I you. I still think that's good for a man though. To just go and get that rejection yeah, sometimes. I don't mind the rejection to be fair. I just think it's, it's the, that that's the smoke is, is so unnecessary. Many dudes, so many dudes do mind the rejection. Yeah. And that's, that's, this, is where it gets, this is where it gets problematic. This is where men become misogynist. Yeah. It's like get used to being rejected and understand that they're not being a bitch. They're just being a bitch to you. Because you approached in the wrong way, right? Then start the conversation properly. Maybe you walked up to her instead of the fucking boobs. You really think you're going to get <laughs> yeah. a decent response when From, the first yeah. thing you're looking at is sexualizing her? Well, no, you're yeah, not. Yeah. So you know what? You need to get fucking rejected so you can callous your mind a little bit and realize that you need to change your approach. Yeah. And I had a whole system for this. Right. I called IOIs. All right. I had a list of, I think it was 20. And if a girl would give you three IOIs, which are indicators of interest, go talk to her. Yeah. If she gave you five, Get to know her. And if she gave you about six, try kiss her if you want. <laughs> right there and then on the... Well, it f- depends. Depends on how the conversation is going. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, basically, I see so what you're important. saying. It's just that like, yeah. you, 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 there's a metric, there's a system to which like, you have to be, like, there's a, there's a method of approach, essentially. You can't, like, you have to get these indicators mm. before you proceed further. 100%. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. You can't, like, <clears throat> 100% a cold approach a pretty good. Get used to being rejected and get used to learning how to speak to people on the fly. Yeah. I have a three second rule. Yeah. Right? If there's a pretty girl, by the time I count to three, I have to be face to face with her. Yeah. Even if I don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? It just it, But that might work for you too. You're a good looking guy. Yeah, but I started this when I wasn't. You started right. this when you weren't. I started this when I was a fatty. But, right? I started but, but, this when I was a dumpling. How about when you were a fatty but with a nice face? Because sometimes a nice face still works. Because you see, yeah. women don't really see, like, I think it's different for women, you know. Like women can date down but it, yes. but men tend to punch in relationships like men are punching mostly in relationships like they tend to like date girls that are way better looking in the relationship than them yeah. it's very rare to find a guy who's not dating a girl who's way better looking than them mm. and that's because women are just naturally open to just the guy and you know their character mm. before they look at looks before they feel overtly you know, attracted to you. They just want, they just care about what's inside sometimes. Yeah. It's very rare for a woman to be like, oh, I want to date the best looking guy because half the time that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've dated girls way better looking than me. Do you know why? Because they didn't care. Yeah. And because you're a fucking comic and that's one of the biggest things you can do for a chick. If you make I'll a just, fucking oof, laugh, bro, bro, you make a laugh, they love that. Pants wet. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, love you know? that. And they love that for a reason because they yeah. feel comfortable and yeah. they feel safe. Yeah. Right. And at the end of the day, it's one of those things where 
I think you should never be afraid to approach a woman. Yeah. But in today's day and age, women have made you afraid. Yeah. Before there was the fear was unfounded. I'm going to get rejected. Yes, you are. Get over it. Get on with it. Yeah. Plain and simple, right? You may not be a good suitor. Tough shit. She wasn't being a bitch. Just a bitch to you. Rethink your approach. She's not a nasty person. You just fucked it up. But then that takes a lot of responsibility and puts it on a man's shoulders. Where it should fucking be. Mm. But then with this rise of like, you know, men literally doing nothing and then getting ripped for it, they're going to be like, you know what, oh, fuck this, I'm not going to do that. Bro, you know, I'd love to hear you speak on, yeah? Yeah. Do you have like, like a set of pickup lines that you use in different scenarios? Because there's going to be a bunch of men watching this, you know? <laughs> and they're going to be wondering, because the last time you came on as well, just, and, and again, just before we even get into that, yeah. the last time you came on, thank you for making us do the most listened to episode on Spotify of 2023. Nah, that's blessed, my brother. You fucking killed it, man. Bless, it was bless. a really long form conversation. I enjoyed talking to you. We talked about everything. I mean, I, I read one comment on Instagram where, um, actually it was Sushi. Sushi yeah. commented on a video that you were on, you know, yeah, yeah. from time ago. So it was when I had you on and asked you about food. Yeah. And Sushi's comment was, um, I saw my brother do a cry for help by asking about food and meal prep. And then I saw the other guy on the other side of the camera and it was this wham dunny. <laughs> like, yeah. Cause like, cause the video, the way the video starts, it's just, it's just me. And I'm like, how do you meal prep? And then the video just pants to you. Yeah. And so she's like, I need to pay attention to this guy. Do you know what I mean? Cause he didn't know he was going to see me. But I thought that was funny, but no, we recorded the best episode in 2023. Thank you for doing it. Um, and, and also the year before that, you did another episode, but this is when I was back at my flat. Yeah, so yeah. we've always recorded like really fun episodes. Um, and just before the podcast started, I was just talking about how much I respect you. Mm. I love you as a brother. And yeah, um, we've been on this journey for a while. Yeah. You, me, and my brother, who's, yeah. you know, Damien, I'm calling you out. You should come on my podcast, brother. 100%, I love you. Bro. That's you my, got a lot of value to offer. Yeah, yeah that's my blood. Yeah. But um, not to not to take away from our initial conversation. So like pick up lines. Do you, do you have a couple that you just throw out there? Or so, are you just smooth? Just like, hey, how no, you doing? No, 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 no. I had to... Strategic. I, yeah, I never, never had charisma, right? A yeah. perfect example is Josh on Open House. Mm -hmm. He, me and him stood in contact yesterday. Tell people very quickly what Open House is just so for open, context. Open House is something I did more recently um, in terms of my life. Not as in recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, where I threw myself beyond my comfort zone, to put it lightly, where I went into a house and it was called Open House of Great Sex Experiment. And everyone is a different... Different ilks of life, put it to put it simply. <laughs> and couples would come in to try experiment with how they want their relationship to unfold, polyamory, monogamy, sharing, whatever it may be, right? And that was a show essentially. Yeah. And it was on channel four, right? Yeah, yeah, it was on channel four. Yeah. Um, but I went in there with just sticking to my guns, like I am me, I'm not changing the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, Josh with that show, me and him got really, really close. And uh, he's like a really squared away dude. It's mm -hmm. just a fucking top guy. His charisma is is just you you know, you you can't can't build that charisma. That's just palpable. It's yeah. just too good. Yeah. Uh, mine was, okay, you haven't got it. So you need to learn how to get it. So, wow. hey, you may not be a natural at it, but I wasn't a natural at rugby either. And I was like, sweet, it's going to take work and graft, right? This is what you want to, this is how you want to end up like perceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, reverse engineer that to how you're going to get there. And yeah, so I would have in the beginning, I would have pickup lines. And the reason I'd have pickup lines was not because I wanted to pick a chick up. The goal was never to try and fucking sleep with her. Mm -hmm. That was never the goal. Actually, one of the rules is nothing is ever a big deal. If she's a pretty girl, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter. Why would you put her on a pedestal? You're meeting at a level of equality first and foremost, mm -hmm. right? So, and that's how it should be. So, <laughs> talk about a fucking straight up warning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and so essentially, yeah, I would until I understood what they did. Yeah. So for me, it's not just about, oh, here's the answer. It's okay, why does that work? Why mm. does that open a conversation? Why does that get people to talk to you? Mm -hmm. And then once I understand the concept, I can make my fucking own. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I can build my own around the person I am, you know? And so I did. I had a few. Um, the one I always used, and because this was the one where I understood the concept behind what it does, right? So... Pickup line is not designed to pick you up. And if you're using them for that, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> they are designed to open a conversation so the yeah. woman can actually see you're not one of these average incel beta males. Yes, that's what they are. And there are a lot of them, unfortunately. But there's a research of masculinity. So if I were you lads, I'd stand up. Um, where essentially you go, hi, can I buy you a drink? You're the 50th guy that night who's asked her the same fucking question. Yeah. Do you really think she's going to pay attention to you? The answer is no. And nor should she. 
She has 50 other suitors saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Why on earth would she pay attention to you? What's so different? Mm. You know what I mean? So it was like, okay, so how do you open these conversations? And the one I'd have was, I'll go up and pretty girls are never found alone. <laughs> Ever. No. Ever. They're always in what I would call sets, which yeah. is a group. So, a convoy. Yeah, exactly. And you sometimes get a set of just five girls. Sometimes you get a set of 10 and there's yeah. five dudes and five chicks. There's always like one that is like super hot though. Like there's always yeah, like yeah. a there's, leader. There's a chick, there's a, there's a girl. Always. There's yeah. always like a really exactly. fine one and one that's, they, and there's just a couple that are just like, yeah, yeah sometimes all right. Sometimes you'll get, you'll get a set of, 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 of all of them, but you've got to know who, you, who it is you're trying to speak to. Right. Because then you're going into the dynamics of the conversation. Mm. And these skills that I learned have been so transferable to every aspect of my life. Yeah, It's probably one of the most valuable skills I ever, ever learned, which mm-hmm. was the ability to communicate and to understand what someone else is saying effective. Right. Effective immediately. Right. You know, picking up what they're putting down, understanding every single thing. And mm-hmm. one, once I understood the concept behind the pickup line, I was like, okay, now I don't need a pickup line because I understand that they want to have scintillating conversation with someone who's different. Right. That's it okay. right so you don't need pickup lines that's what they're looking for yeah. right and it was i would say i would usually walk up to a set of girls like guys or ladies you know what i mean i'd say me and my friends are having a bit of a discussion and we're talking about women and men lying and i want to hear your thoughts on this and you would pretty much be able to gauge a response yeah i may use it on you and see what your response is because i think i know what it'll be oh, no. um <laughs> and I would say, so do women train guys to lie? And it would always start a conversation. And that is what you want because you're a stranger. Why would they want to talk to you? Yeah. You have to be interesting. You can't just be good looking because that's boring as fuck, in my opinion. <laughs> you, know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to have some substance. Yeah. And that's why I always think people who kind of blossom later tend to have that substance. People who blossomed earlier tend to develop that substance a little bit later. Yeah. Um, sometimes both of them just nail it down. But, and I would always start with this, this, this opener is what I call them. I never call them pickup lines. I call them openers. Yeah. And it would always open the conversation. Okay. Can you give me like another opener that you might have for like a scenario where there's a bunch of girls there? Cause you know, that's like sometimes that, that one, that every one. single time How do you walk up to the group, ladies, I'm um, me and dad. Uh, so so if, let's say the ladies are the camera, right? I'll yeah. say ladies, me and dad, we were just having a conversation. We couldn't come to an agreement. So we need a female perspective on this, mm. right? Do girls train guys to lie? Let's go around the circle. Now wow. all of a sudden you've ordered it, right? So, okay, let's start with you. Okay, and then you go around. And the conversation just tasks like that. And then, and then the conversation goes on. They all have these cool different, and you'll watch like some of them will glance at the other and then you can start to kind of figure out who yeah. is the kind of omega of the yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. But you have your eye on the girl that you like as well. So how do you then no, like... No, you don't pay attention to her. Yeah? No, you pay attention to the group because the group is either going to lie you in or not. Mm-hmm. And you're not getting to her unless you get to the group. Right. right. So if you've got a group and it's full of dudes, you don't go in there like, I'm, I'm the alpha male. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. It's like shut, <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, yeah. That's... Ugh, like ick yeah, yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I would think about as a chick yeah. it's like no you go in there and you chat to the blokes and you get to know them and yeah, you, yeah, you become yeah, yeah. chum with them then they're the first dude to be like hey brother I'll wing I you see what you're mate. saying bro that listen, makes a I lot of sense her. and listen you know she likes X, Y and Z dude, you're like that's sick man and dude then, do you know why that's crazy yeah it's yeah. because like if you ignore her then she'll she might eventually come around just based on the fact that you know she feels ignored, one. Mm-hmm. But second of all, you've created a vibe. You've created like an energy sequence yeah. where everybody else is having such a good time. And They're now she's, in. And then she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, she's trying to like, kind of like come in a little bit. Like yeah. she's, she, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, you're not paying attention to her, mm. but you you are in your mind. You're just not giving you know, her the physical you know attention. She's, she's the chick you like. Yeah. That's but what, what if she, she doesn't come around her, then? What do you do? Well, if she doesn't come around. It's firstly, a waste of a trip, isn't it? So it's, it's you, you got to be a gentleman. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I mean by that is you can develop the conversation and you'll be hit with a bunch of different either negative remarks. Yeah, yeah. Right, I just call them negs. Negative remarks, um, <clears throat> them being standoff, whatever it may be, because they still don't know you, yeah. right? So you're trying to bridge a gap of time here. Yeah. So they feel like they know you a little bit better. Not so you can get in their pants, but so you can actually develop the relationship so you can just really put forth who you are. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, men have to chase women. Yeah. It's not the other way around. Unfortunately, society is swinging that way. And I don't think a lot of ladies see that and they're not doing it on purpose. But accidentally, by feminizing men and stuff like that, it's going to be a situation where you ladies are going to have to approach dudes. So do you think Never. that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's the Give thing as well. Give five years. <laughs> no, not yeah, me, yeah. not me. <laughs> so like, I don't think that... I don't think that... Yeah, I think our world is definitely going in that direction where women are starting to 
propose to men, women are starting to that's ask. Bad, I think that's out, but it's already happening. I've seen a ton of clips online where women are asking like, guys I out. So. I'm like, motherfucker, you wouldn't kneel? You, this is a chick you're going to marry. She has substance. She has looks. She's oh, a lifer. Are men now saying they don't want to kneel? And they're going, I'm not going to kneel, motherfucker. That's the woman you kneel to. You don't kneel to the fitty in a nice dress who's drunk on cocktails, stumbling her words. No. Yeah. Right? If she's not of the same caliber and value of someone who's going to be your wife, you fucking kneel to that shit. Well, could one argue that like in a world where everything is fast changing, that certain things like that we consider to be just the proper way to do things will eventually change. But that's not the only thing that's changing in life, right? It's like everything. So things are evolving. Mm. We've got technology. Things are going in a particular direction. Mm. Relationships are going to evolve as well. Things are not always going to be the way they've always been. Yes. Do you not think? So um, like, but how can you then say that, you know, things from the past that, you know, we held on to? Because if, if, we, if we go back a couple of years ago, there's also things that are not quite as proper that we've had to drop and evolve from them. This is true. You know, the idea of like, you know, feminism became a thing more recently, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why is, is because women wanted to feel equal to men. 100%. But then there's also been men in the past that always treated their women equally. Exactly. But they wanted to start this movement where they wanted to be equal yeah. to men. Yeah, women's suffrage. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I think, I think women have now got that opportunity. And if they start to mention the toxic patriarchy, just understand that if men were gone, there would be no society. Yeah. Right? Not because we control it, no. But because we keep it going, unfortunately, whether we like to admit it or not, right? Yeah. Not only that, men are the enforcement mechanism, right? Shit hits the fan, you're going to call a fucking man, right? And you'll go, no, why not call my girlfriends? Okay, cool. Well, when three guys surround you on Time Bridge, you call your girlfriends. Good luck. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call my girlfriend. Call your boys. Like, ladies, ladies, can you, can, you, can you get me out of this one? Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, your boy is like, buckle no, up. It's going to be a fucking yeah, yeah. big one. It's going to be a long night. You know what I mean? And so men are an enforcement mechanism, but what people fail to understand is that although men and women are different, you need one another. So I hate this division in sexes. It pisses me off. Yeah. When, when guys get misogynistic or when women start to get, you know, extremely vicarious and vicious in their framing of men, that they're all evil and they're all this. It's like both trains of thought are completely twisted and warped. You need one another, unfortunately. Yeah. And in my opinion, fortunately, what, what traits women have, we will never understand. The maternal connection between a mother and a child, you will never understand as a man, right? You may have a different connection with your child as a father figure, but not the same as a maternal mother who grew that child in her fucking womb for nine months, bro. Right. You're not going to have that. Whereas a woman won't necessarily, and I can unequivocally say this, experience the same level of utter, pure, unadulterated anger and rage that a man can experience. Mm -hmm. Because we're an enforcement mechanism. Women are the measurement and the barometer for how good a society is. Mm. Right? Yeah, that you want to see if a society is effective and functioning, look at the woman. They'll show you straight away whether the society is effective and efficient. Yeah. You know, and now women have equal rights to men and e pretty much equal opportunity across the board. In my personal opinion, there's just certain jobs you guys don't do because you are not equipped to do it because of physical. There's certain jobs we cannot do. I cannot be a midwife. But you can. <laughs> Fuck, bro. Not but as well as a woman. Right? Do you think so? Okay, well, put it this way. Well, how about how about we get me and we get Amy <laughs> on a rugby pitch, and we say let's play against. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, so that's a physical endeavor. Yeah, right. In it's that still a difference, though. Oh, hundred percent. And it's got to be hundred percent. Unless if you're a trans woman. Well, then, then you're a fucking be... man. <laughs> you got two chromosomes. Listen. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. All you want, motherfuckers. You got two chromosomes. You got an XX, you yeah, got an yeah. XY. Well, right? If you want to be a transgender person, that's yeah. cool. Not a problem. Some of them are more beautiful than real women. Not an issue. Right? Mm -hmm. The issue I have is when you are telling me what I must address you as. Now you're encroaching on my free speech. Don't do that shit. Yeah, I'm yeah, encroaching yeah. on yours. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you want to call yourself Daisy when you're really David? More power to you. Doesn't mean I have to call you fucking Daisy. If you asked me nicely and said, hey, Ryan, can you call me Daisy? I'd be like, sure, Daisy. David. But that's granted, you know that they actually transition. If you didn't know, some of these trans people are starting to look really good with the surgeries yeah, and stuff. Like, it's insane. Some but, of them but are to my, outshining but, but, but to my point is, is that, you know, um, on f when it comes to a physical endeavor, it's quite difficult to put a man and a woman in certain feats. But, you know, but... And that's why it's so but, stupid when they do. It's yeah. Like, like, like... I, like why would you starve women of fair competition? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not who's, it's not, you know, he has the female equivalent of LeBron James. It's like, okay, that's the female equivalent. Put her up against the best female LeBron James. Yeah. Yeah. 
now you're creating an unfair playing field yeah. and you're thinking you're actually getting a level of equality here. No, yeah. you're actually just, you just loaded the deck against you. What are you doing? <laughs> like, it's, only, it's only palatable when it's like an intellectual endeavor. Yes. So like, you know, when someone says, hey, I want to study this field or I want to study this subject that I think a man and a woman can be comparable mm. um, in, in their endeavor of study of an intellectual task. Yes. But I think sometimes the differences can be that sometimes women are more, or men in certain instances can be sort of like more innate. They can have more in, like sort of like dr draw, if you will, or like this sort of like, they have this thing inside of them that draws them to a task. Yes. So like, it's like women yes. can be better at certain things just because maybe they are more patient. Mm. And men can be better at other things because maybe they're more sort of like assertive. Yes. Just what I'm trying to say. Yes. So for instance, when you said about the whole midwifery thing, I think for a woman, because, you know, it's more natural, you know, that women do give birth. So it might be like, maybe they're just slightly better at the job. But, you know, I'm and sure then, that there are a lot of male midwives out there. Do you know what I mean? You so strengths and weaknesses. But that's, yeah, but that's got nothing to do necessarily with equality as such. It's just a case that when men and women come together in these instances, you know, um, that maybe they have certain traits and those traits could actually transcend sexes. It could just be that like it, a particular person has a personality where they're more like that first girl. Do you know what I mean? You know that first girl I was talking about? What one? The the first one that broke my heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, she was so much smarter than me. Yeah. Like, like most by, women are smarter than me. Yeah, like by country miles. She was so diligent yeah. and so much smarter. You know, it's the problem lies and not uh, you know, you're as smart as me and such. It's some jobs men are better at than women. Some jobs women are, are better at, sorry, women are better at than men. Yeah. You know, and that's just the reality of the game. And when people go, yeah. no, that, that can't be true. It's like, okay, well, look at the data, right? Unfortunately, it is true. And you'll notice this because you've got some real cool exemptions to the rule, which I've studied of women who are extremely disagreeable in nature. Yeah. Right. Which is not a bad trait to have. It just means you question the narrative a lot, yeah. which is a good thing to do. It's like, okay, so why am I like, I'm just like, I'm high in agreeableness, but I'm also disagreeable. I always ask, well, why am I doing this? Because mm -hmm. like, like the pickup lines, I want to understand what the purpose of that is. Is it to get in the pants? I don't want to do that. Yeah. If it's to actually open up a conversation, I can see if she's a, a woman of value and she can see my value. Okay, different gravy. Then I need yeah. to understand that. Yeah. Right. So it's the acknowledgement that look, some shit, men are better at than women. Some shit, women, women are, are better. And just deal with it. That's the reality of the game. And I think that some shit as well, it's not even to do with men versus women or, or vice versa. It's just more to do with personality traits. So that's what I was trying to actually yeah, so articulate. The, yeah, the oh, exemptions yeah, yeah. to the rule, I like that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 yeah. It's so, so, this is so cool because there are multiple, so I work with a majority of the, the people I work with are women, about 70%, okay? And some of them are in extremely male-dominated industries, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now you will notice a clear differential in personality traits in comparison to let's say the general populace of right. women, right? right? They will be a lot more disagreeable, right. a lot more stronger in, in, in um, their conviction with what it is they want to do, mm -hmm. and a lot less orientated on how they feel as much mm -hmm. because they're now in a male dominated environment in which they need to outperform males because there's a majority of, so engineering is a really good example, yeah. right? Uh, I had a female engineer Mm. And she was a beast. She was a killer, like an absolute killer. Mm. And she wouldn't take any shit. Mm. And it was pretty dope to fucking see. Mm -hmm. And we would always have conversations. So, so are you always like, she's, she's like, I'm never like this with my husband. I was like, right, okay, really interesting. I was like, so is this when you're at the office? She's like, when I'm at the office, I need to be fucking sharp. I was like, if you don't mind, what do you wear when you go to the office? And I was expecting her to say pantsuit, you know what I mean? Like, that's exactly what she said. And I said, do you know why you wear that? She was like, no. And I was like, it makes you come across more masculine and therefore more disagreeable and therefore more accepted in that domain, which makes you more effective. She was like, huh, I never thought about that. I was like, that's the reality of the game. You know, and you got some women who are just absolute savages, these exemptions to the rule, just like you got men who are extremely maternal in nature, but mm -hmm. still, in my personal opinion, you'll never be able to smoke a woman with that maternal connection mm -hmm. because she has to grow that life. Mm -hmm. um, and you see these exemptions to the rule and they're fascinating because you want to learn, okay, well, what's so different here? 
How did you dominate that environment? An environment that was mainly dominated by men, yeah, or, or vice versa. Yeah, it's fucking interesting, and it's so cool to see. But the, it's that's what people need to understand: as men and women, we need one another. Like we riff yeah. with one another really yeah. well. Yeah, and that's why it's important to understand: it's not male versus female or, or female versus male. It's, yeah, we're in this together. Let's understand: we both have traits that others don't have. Yeah, and that's what makes us such a sick team. Yeah, you know, when you look at the family unit, that's what makes it so sick and so effective. Yeah, you know, a father figure and a mother figure, right? The yeah, mother figure we the maternal nature to a degree sometimes it may, the roles may switch yeah but you'll see how effective that is in rearing a child yeah yeah see what happens when you take a father out the home see what happens to take a mother out the home yeah it, it like data wise you can see it reduces the efficacy of that child's ability to actually make it in the world mm. that's because something fact. is always missing yeah so something's missing you need you need everybody to like all hands need to be on deck essentially 100 for, for because no matter how good of a parent you are when you have a kid yeah. I'm not speaking from experience, but just this is pure anecdotal evidence. Yeah. But when you have a kid, it's no matter how good of parents you are, it's a probability chance of how they're going to turn out. Yeah. You know, um, Jeffrey Dahmer had a good mother and father. He did. <laughs> they're really fought, they fought his side as well, you know. Yeah. They're really fought his side. They did like, everything they could for him, right? But yeah. this is what I mean is you want to, as a, as, a, as a parent, set yourself up, set your kid up, to have the highest probability of success in this life, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that's extremely imperative. And seeing that is so cool. And that, that's why, you know, this is what's so interesting. So I, there's, a, there's a few mothers I work with. They're some of the highest performing clients on the roster. Now they got kids, little infants, right? Sleeping in their bed, disrupting their sleep. And these women are losing 30, 40 pounds. Mm. I'm like, what? You are a fucking savage. <laughs> you know, you guys are killers. And like, I don't think a man would be able to handle that the way a woman can. Mm. Um, and it, like, that's a perfect example of female resiliency and strength. Another really good example is what happens if a toddler gets trapped under a car and a mother who you've deadlifted in a day in her life sees that. She's deadlifting the shit out of that bumper to get that toddler out. So, you know, when people think that men are just strong and women are just weak, nah, that's not the case. Different traits. Right, different substrata of those traits. Mm. You know what I mean? Like my mom was extremely strong woman, like vicious strong. You know, like she would, she I would, I'd get called to the principal office, right? And she would come in there and I would have done something wrong because I was a little shit bag, right? <laughs> I was a little bastard. <laughs> she would come in there, like gloves on, ready for war. And she would be like rinsing the teachers. And then it would get to me and she'd be like, wait till you get home. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, fuck me. Yeah. I'm so dead. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's just, it's insane. But the lack of acknowledgement of the differences is the problem and the lack mm. of appreciation of said differences are the issues, you know? And I think that's that's wild. Yeah. That society's gone that way where it's like, you guys are all the same. No, you're not the fucking same, but that's what makes it so special. Mm. That's what makes it so cool. That's what makes it work. Mm. You look at the yin and yang symbol, black and white. Mm. If one eats the other, you're fucked. Yeah. You know, so. This is why I love that podcasting is a thing. This is why I love that we can have conversations about these things because I don't think that I know enough about everything. So sitting down, you know, across from someone such as yourself where we can kind of like talk about things yeah. or debate topics 100%. or just go deep into it is really healthy because then it opens up my perspective and I'm sure maybe yours and no other doubt. people listening and people that may be listening or you know watching these conversations are not you know designed to trigger people it's basically curious people sitting down talking about issues that we see on a daily basis and just talking about them because we want to understand them better and we want the yeah. people that listen to us to have a better understanding this is not a conversation about men versus women or personality no, this versus, is a remedy this is, for that discussion yeah this is like this a, we is need to talk about these things so that we can better understand as a society Society yeah. Because society seems to be falling apart. That The one thing that I wake up to every single day that makes me worried is the fact that society is crumbling at a massive rate. And that actually is a perfect segue for me. Fucking brilliant segue. Yeah. <laughs> Your boy. <laughs> He's smooth today. <laughs> Ladies and gents, hey. he is sharp as a die. Hey, listen, is that Magic Mind? And I noticed that you've been drinking Magic Mind, by the way. <laughs> this is the perfect segue for Magic Mind as well. I'm just going to get that. Go for it. Well, so Magic Mind is a energy drink that they call a mental performance shop. 
It okay, tastes like a mental performance shot to be yeah, fair, bro. It's great. It's, it's, got, nice. it's got all the good shit in it. You know, you've got your nootropics, your adaptogens, you've got honey, yeah, dope, you've got man. matcha in there. Yeah. The way I like to describe Magic Mind is, is that it gets you laser focused, but you're not crashing and burning as quickly as, you know, you're you right. might do on coffee. You're right. You I, I completely agree. Do if, you do, if you had to choose between coffee and this, I'd take this. My guy. Mm. You heard it from mm. the man himself. Magic Mind is... The drink that you want to be drinking to start your day in the <laughs> in the mornings. <laughs> Camera two, pan towards yeah, Ryan holding the magic mind shot this bottle like that. <laughs> is magic mind. Yeah, yeah. It will blow your, your mind. mind. Yeah. No, actually, it is actually dog with shit. Like I'm yeah. not I'm not I'm not I'm not just sucking dick here. It's actually sick. That's sick, sick, sick. Appreciate yeah. you, my guy. So um for those that are listening at home watching and, and so on and so forth, feel free to go over to Magic Mind dot com forward slash daps and my discount code is daps20 daps20 so use that get yourself some magic mind it's really good i enjoy it because it just it, it just I'm not, i just don't get as tired as what a as healthy alternative word. as well like way to think yeah so i've stuff. actually i've been speaking to baristas and, and coffee owners around newcastle about what the most popular morning drink is or morning coffee is and i've been told it's flat white yeah. Now I'm not really a coffee dude, but I wanted to get into that world of coffee. And Amy's laughing. Yeah, I don't drink coffee. I don't do anything. You know, I'm a straight edge kind of guy. You know. I think it's so insane that you don't. Oh, I think it's a very good thing that you don't drink coffee. But it's so sick. Yeah. I would struggle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still able to like carry on with my day. I don't know how. I just do it. But then Magic Mind came along, and I was like, I'll try this just to see. And so far, it's been so good. So for everybody watching, just go get yourself some Magic Mind. 100%. It, it's, it's good for starting your day. So start your day off right. But, you know, yeah. sort of like segueing back into what I wanted to talk about with regards to like how society is crumbling. Um, the geopolitical spectrum as such. Yes, sir. Let's yeah. get into it. You know, um, so I saw an article today that deemed the UK as the second most miserable country to live in in the world. <laughs> yeah. On planet Earth. I'll second that. Pardon the pun. <laughs> in the Milky Way galaxy. Fam. <laughs> yeah. Right behind Ubekistan, bro. What? <laughs> yeah. Ubekistan, Ubekistan is number one. But I can kind of understand it. I've never been to Ubekistan. Okay. So people of Ubekistan, you're going to have to forgive me. Yeah? I imagine it's doomy and gloomy as fuck because yeah, like, yeah, it's so many around like the Russian region, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Ubekistan yeah. is around well, there. Well, anything around the Russian basin will be slightly less... Um, economically inclined because of the sanctions either imposed by the EU or Facts, Russia. Yeah. Um, because it was like in the past part of the Soviet basin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot of those places. Ukraine. Yeah, are like now on the outer reach. Georgia, yeah, all those, they all those are countries. Now on the outer there. reach, so they don't have as much economic inclination as, let's say, Central Eurasia and Russia. Yeah. But um, I've always felt like those people are also quite stoic in nature compared oh, to nails. Western Europeans. Am I wrong? No, no, no. You're right. Right? The they, they just get on with life, right? Oh, so, so like, tough. so when I saw that in an article that like Ubekistan is, unless if I'm wrong about the geo, you know, geography of where Ubekistan is, but I believe it's somewhere around that region. I'm surprised that those stoics are feeling a bit down because this is to do more with mental health. But anyways, the UK is number two. And yeah, no I wanted to talk. Yeah, right? Yeah. You know, oh, and right. then, you know, and, you know, a little bit, you told me that you're going to be leaving the UK soon. You know, I am indeed. Damn. I am. I'm, I'm tossing it up between either Thailand, Bali, maybe even South Africa. Oh, even South Africa? Well, South Africa's got the highest rate of reverse immigration in uh, the world at the moment, which means there's the most people going back there. Wow. And it's also got a very high percentage rate of new startup businesses. Wow. And it's part of BRICS. So, yeah, yeah it's okay. the first time where you're going to get a split um, power uh, dynamic in the world ever where you've got mm. the West as a superpower and then you've got the East as a superpower mm. um, which is going to be very interesting to so see how that plays out where are you leaning more towards are you leaning more towards Asia or Africa Africa calls me but yeah. the cool thing is my parents are actually going back now so my whole family is going to be back there wow they um, live in the UK yeah, they every, yeah, really, it's all happening and I'll tell you why in a second but me um, leaning towards South Africa and, and possibly Asia probably Thailand Mm. If if I was to go and I would say like somewhere like Koh Samui, you know, which is right. an island. Right. And you can get the ferry straight into like Phuket. Yeah. Um, or Koh Samui, what was the other one? Somewhere in Northern Thailand, very spiritual place in the mountains. Right. Lots of temples. Right. Um, and I think that's what's lost in the West is the spirituality. But if you're talking about geopolitics, the West as a civilization is crumbling. Now, when a society and I've got a geopolitics. If anyone doesn't know, I've actually got a degree in geopolitics. Let's go, um, bro. <laughs> so, I got the right guy on the pod yeah, today, man. My dissertation is, is, I should actually give it to you, is actually me predicting exactly what's happening now. Really? Yep. 
Wow. I'm not even fucking. All right, let's get into it, man. Strap so, in, guys. Yeah, it's it's insane. Strap in. Um, I can't believe I was right. Stick the ke- <laughs> stick the ke- stick the kettle on. <laughs> let's go. I was fucking right. Can we read was, it? Yeah, honestly, if you want to bore yourself to death, go for it. I yeah. mean, like it's like the stick. Though. <laughs> um, can we find it anywhere right now? Is it no, it's just my dissertation. Oh, okay, okay. My, my own it's not published or anything? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't get published or anything like that because okay. it said it was too far-fetched. Right. <laughs> okay, talk to us yeah, about they, they this. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is, a bit, this is a bit out of reach. I was like, hmm. Talk to us okay. about this, bro. So I basically highlighted two things. One, culture is one of the most imperative things in terms of understanding the world. Right. You don't understand it. It's not about languages. It's culture, right? If you understand the culture, guess what? You'll probably speak the language more fluently than than if you just learned the language itself, right? So for example, if you learn Chinese in England, but someone who learned Chinese in China, they would speak it like a Chinese person because they understand both the culture as well as the mannerisms. Now, what I spoke about with regard to the decline in the West is very simple. Society doesn't ossify. So when a civilization breaks down, it doesn't just evaporate into thin air. It doesn't just dissolve. It crumbles. It slowly degrades. It slowly breaks into pieces. And you saw it with the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Greek Empire, the Egyptian Empire, um, the Aztec Empire, the list goes on, okay? And it doesn't ossify, it doesn't evaporate. What you get is outward migration of the most able. So people who are intelligent and who are educated, right? Let's just call them relatively to a degree the most able because they may be able to see things that people who are not educated can see, okay? Knowledge is power, right? The only true happiness is knowledge. The only ignorance, the only true evil is ignorance, as fucking Seneca said, right? But with that being said, what you'll notice is they'll see this and then they will go elsewhere because they don't want to be in that position, right? If you're getting taxed out the ass, all this kind of stuff, they're going to go, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go somewhere else. Then you'll get inward migration of the least able, right? So people fleeing from a country that is in extreme dec- economic deprivation to a country that they deem to be better, Right. So like England or America, right? You can mm-hmm. see what's happening on the borders all around. Um, and essentially what then happens, you get immigration of the least able. Now, these are the people who will start to, you know, use benefits, et cetera, and stuff like that as well, because mm-hmm. they're not coming through legal ports of entry. Mm-hmm. Some of these people want a better life. I get it. Right. But that's not the point. Right. We're generalizing here. OK. And you can even see that some of them are coming with malignant intent, too, which is very interesting. You know, you look at some of the attacks in London. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they come from people who came illegally. Mm-hmm. Now, I have no harbor resentment towards immigrants. I'm a fucking immigrant. You're an immigrant. So, <laughs> no, there's no harbor resentment, right? Mm-hmm. But by the same token, what you've got to look at is that firstly. Then you've got to look at what does Western civilization predicate its culture of? Judeo-Christian values. So, you look at the American Constitution. It does not work unless it's based off Judeo-Christian values. And everyone will go, well, why? Because when they got there, right, and, you know, the Americans, English, or whoever landed there just started, like, you know, ripping the place apart, and the Constitution was built, and everyone got their freedom and all that kind of stuff, it was based off Christian values. Mm -hmm. So if you remove the bedrock of what it is, so let's say cultural dilution of, oh, it's not okay to be a Christian, or it's not okay to be a Muslim, or it's not okay to be X or Y, then what you have is a degradation of the civilization as a whole because the actual foundation on which it was built upon Mm -hmm. has been ripped out from underneath it. So now the castle is on sand, Mm -hmm. right? So then what essentially happens is as soon as that gets kind of eroded away and you can't be a Christian or if you're a Christian, you're going to get in trouble for it or whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. then what happens is is you'll start to get people of different um, theological ideologies coming in. That's actually not a problem if it's controlled. Right. Mm. So there has to be more of the people who actually live there in that country Mm -hmm. because it's their country. It's their society. Right. Yeah. And a really good example of effective means of this is Dubai. Right. You Mm -hmm. go to Dubai, you abide by Dubai's rules. Mm. But you can be a Westerner. You can be a Christian. That's completely fine. But on certain beaches, you can't do X. You can't do Y. Respect Mm -hmm. that. Please. It's my country. Mm -hmm. Now, in the West, because the Judeo-Christian values have kind of been eroded away culturally, what you're now getting is a slow collapse of the civilization itself. Mm. And what's going to take its place is going to be a different culture or a culture that becomes more predominant in its nature. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it works. So what you need is people who have spine, um, who can say, no, this is who, look, like, when was the last time you someone go, I'm proud to be fucking English. They're too scared to say that now because they'll get called racist or they'll get called this or that. I'm not English, I'm South African. 
Um, and for anyone who thinks I'm a white South African and racist, you don't know my story. So Daps can fill you in on that one. Um, <laughs> Go watch some of the episodes we've yeah. done in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Daps can fill you in on that one. Um, so what you then get is other people coming in yeah. and then being like, okay, well, we're the majority of the house, essentially. Like, we're, we're the majority here. So my rules can fly now, bitch. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. And that is human nature. That is not a specific sect of people. Right, that is just human nature. Right, human beings conquer. That's what they always have done. Right, mm -hmm. it's just different means of it. Now it's all about psyoping mm -hmm. more than physical confrontation. Mm -hmm. So what you see is this influx of on borders illegal illegal people coming in. Yeah, and then the people who bear the brunt are those who cannot outwardly migrate, mm -hmm. and then you get conflict. Mm -hmm. Right, so it basically erodes the fabric of what that civilization is built upon. And if you look at civilization timelines, I think one of the longest standing civilizations was the Romans. And I think it stood for about seven to 800 years. Mm. We're getting near that mark right now. And the main precursor, and this is a fact that I study, a main precursor before the downfall of every civilization, the main precursor to that was when they started fucking with gender and identity. Yeah. Because then the population wouldn't grow, right? And things would happen and then it would just break apart mm. because now you're not going to get a youthful culture. Because, <laughs> you, know I mean, right? yeah. you know, people aren't, you know, keeping the family unit intact. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being gay, nothing wrong with being lesbian. There's nothing wrong with any of that shit. The point I'm making is it's when you start to fuck around with identity and you start to say, well, you can call me a cat. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Okay, there's a line. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not going to call, call me a microphone yeah, today, yeah, like, baby. I, look, I could walk into a thing and I, I could go to the airport and I, I actually did this. I, where did I go? Where was the last place I went? I can't remember. The last place I went, I accidentally put female on my uh, ticket. Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they pulled it up. So, Ryan, they said, yeah, yeah. It says, gender female. I said, yeah. They said, okay. <laughs> identify as a last today like, what are you going to do about it I was like look at the do I look like a female <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, females yeah. have you even seen this ain't like, boobs this, this ain't is pecs <laughs> yeah. Yeah. these are built yeah. you know which was insane so when when that starts to happen this is just a natural precursor it's not whether I agree with it or not yeah right it's just objective yeah it then creates a system where essentially society starts to degradate and what you need in that situation is a leader that's got um not di dictatorial strength, but like almost like warlike strength. You need someone who is similar to, in terms of resolve, a Vladimir Putin, a Donald Trump yeah. kind of person who's going to be like, fuck this. This makes no fucking sense. Yeah. Oh, but I disagree. Shut the fuck up. I'm just going to close the border. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not because I like Trump, because I don't. Yeah. Right. And I, the, I, always, I was saying this to a client the other day who's an American. He said, lovely, lovely person. And we were talking about the election because I'm very, very engrossed in American politics because of the, the amount of Machiavellians in that house is just a joke. And Machiavellian yeah. people are people who pursue power by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. Very, very evil people. And I'm watching them, how they like use their words to coerce people. And I don't really like it. But when you look at that, you can see very clearly that you've got two kinds of enemies. Okay. Two kinds of evils to choose from, essentially. You've got the evil that you can see where someone's going, hey, I'm an asshole. And you're mm -hmm. like, okay, check. You're an asshole with a big ego. Awesome. Then you got the other person who goes, hey, I'm here to help. And the marginalized and, and people who may not necessarily think too clearly will go, oh my God, he's going to help me. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And they do the opposite. Right? There's been a higher rate of racial d discrimination and anti-Semitism under, for example, the Biden administration than there ever was under Trump. Mm. Ever. And people will say, that can't be true. It's like, Guys, it's not the color of your skin. It's actually just the fucking facts. Mm. So what actually happens is, is then division gets sown in society, mm -hmm. right? And people start to bicker amongst themselves. And you're not getting that in societies that are communist or dictatorial, which is really, really fucking scary because they're watching like this, going, mm, it's breaking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Waiting for the opportunity. Um, so... That's essentially how civilization stuff starts to degrade. Yeah. And where it really starts to fuck up is when people can't have a conversation with polarizing views. Yeah. If you can't have a conversation with someone who has a different point of view to you and you live in his own microcosm silo, 
you have and build your own subjective narrative that you reinforce with your own subjective bias, mm -hmm. creating a very warped distortion of the world around you that mm -hmm. isn't necessary to the reality of what's actually happening. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's dangerous. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are, you can't do that. You've got to make sure you're chatting with people who have different points of view or at least points of view that they can be like, let me poke a hole in it. You're like, go for it. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, no, like, like Trump is my guy. It's yeah. Like, because at the end of the day, if you have an idea that people can't challenge you on, then you're essentially forming a cult. You have to be able to have discourse with people that you disagree with so that they can essentially open your eyes to things that maybe you've missed. And even if you've, you know, if you have... Like, let's say you're making a point about something and you, you think you know everything about it. That's good. But if someone else can't point out certain things that either you've missed or to add to your point, then, you know, you're essentially holding on to an idea that's a courtist idea. You know, you're, yes. you're supposed to be yeah. able to talk to people with varying views to yours. For instance, I saw something yesterday that really made me happy. So the PBD podcast, are you familiar with the PBD podcast? Pat, Be uh, Pat Be David, what Pat a David, fucking David, what entertainment, <laughs> my guy. Yeah, yeah. Talk about a guy who has people on that he's happy to disagree with. And yeah. that's why it's so efficient. So in US politics at the moment where, you know, you know, they've got this very big thing with the left versus the right, you know, the, the whole point. you know, the whole liberal yeah. and conservative. So confused. Um, he had Candace Owens on and Chris Cuomo, who used to work for CNN. Yeah, yeah. So Candace Owens, obviously, you know, her politics is Republican. And Chris says, well, I don't know if it's changed now, but at the time, working Democratic. for CNN, Democrats, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But what I like this is, again, going back to what I said about 20 minutes ago about, like, you have to have room for conversations, mm -hmm. whether you agree or disagree. Um, and, you know, now that it feels like society is crumbling, you know, maybe like at a slower rate, but it is crumbling. I think I agree with you in saying that we need people that can stand up and just say, right, this is the way that we're going to do things. And this is going to serve everyone in uh -huh. this regard. Yeah. You know, as you said, you know, Christianity, in countries such as the UK and America is starting to dwindle. Yeah. And that's because people are not as spiritual anymore. People don't believe in God and anymore. And you're also getting like, kind of like, hey, Christianity is evil. Or yeah. Or, is, is, or like, Islam no, is evil. Yeah, or whatever, like, whatever yeah, the case no, might be. This is the thing is, with religion, this is a bit of a digression, but you may want to stick around for this puppy. But yeah. with religion, right? I This is a, a view I came to recently. Is I believe in faith, right? I believe in religion. Yeah. Okay. What I don't believe in is the human being's misinterpretation of theological doctrine. Right. I don't think anyone, whether it's Allah, Buddha, God, this goes on, Jesus Christ for, for any Jewish brothers out there and sisters. Um, it's not, none of them would say, okay, I want you guys to fucking scrap one another. There's a part in the Bible which says there's a time for peace and a time for war. Yeah. In the Quran, there was a period where Muhammad was a prophet and there was a period where he was a warlord. Right? So, the point that I'm making is I think the problem is the misinterpretation by human beings of religious doctrine in turn warping the purity of it for means of power and means of control. A very good example, a very extreme example is the book of Eli, mm. where they're all chasing one book and that book can control humanity. Mm. And everyone knows what that book ends up being, you know? Mm. So it's where I think so humans have gone wrong is I think they've gone wrong in terms of the, the interpretation or specific sound bites that they choose to take to use to either control or, or subsidize or gain power. Yeah. Um, I don't think God, I don't think I don't think everyone would be looking down here being like, I want you guys to fucking lynch each other. I don't think, I, I don't think that's... We're crazy. supposed to be able to live in peace and harmony. Exactly. So let's right? say like... But you've been given freedom of choice. Yeah. So if you want to sin, right, you got to remember when you pray, two people listen. There's God and the devil. So mm. just a heads up when you're talking to the big man upstairs. The devil's listening to you. So he's going to try to tempt you if you're a Christian. Mm. But it's simple. Like you look at it and, and look at how human beings and the good example is, is, is like corrupt Catholicism. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's just an example off the top of my head. You yeah, know, yeah. There's, the a there's a lot. Oh, yeah. look, look at the popes of the past, right? And yeah. I'm, I'm not advocating for Catholicism or Protestantism or anything. Yeah. I'm just using it as an example. That's the misinterpretation of biblical scripture, sacred scripture to attain power mm -hmm. and strength, which I don't think is, is is right in my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Because right. for all we know, all these different books could all be referring to the same deity. We just uh, just basically advocated a different name for them. Yeah. We've just like gone about it a slightly different way. We've just chosen like the, the even the Bible was in, interpreted from like, you know, Hebrew, mm. right? So what well, we're using a version of the Bible interpretation today that we've had to sort of like, you know, interpolate 
you know, uh, and 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 so like the true meaning of what that book actually says would be best understood by the people that understood that language. Exactly. And then they've transcribed it. But in any case, so let's say they can still use it against you if they wanted to. Yeah, but depends yeah. on the, this, the, the human spirit, right? Is it yeah. a corrupt soul or a pure one? Yeah, 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 right. Because they could use that to weaponize you or to, you know, amplify you. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. Let's yeah, yeah. crusade. Yeah, because sometimes you can just pick what part of, the, like, of these books you, you want to like, you yeah. know. If you want to be a warmonger, then you, you can, can find, find in the Quran, you can yeah. find in the Bible, you exactly. can find in the Torah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, facts. So. But I think that we should be able to live in a world, whether that's in Israel or Palestine or in the US or in the crumbling, you know, sort of like society of the UK and all these Western countries. I think that finding the sort of like peace to all coexist together is necessary. I think more conversations like this on opposing sides will bring us better together. So I wanted to put you in a hypothetical situation, yeah? So let's assume that you were a leader in one of these sort of countries, like whether that's the UK or the US or maybe South Africa or one of these crumbling, you know, societal norms. Uh What would you do differently? Like, so let's say you're an elected prime minister tomorrow. What would you do differently? What would be the first thing you do? The first thing I would do is I'd ask myself the question, so let's I, use the UK because the okay. UK is more relevant to us because yeah, we live here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I would probably firstly say, I don't know anywhere near as enough about this job to make calls just yet. Okay. Well, let's because, say you knew, you knew some things. Okay, so let's just say I'm, I'm kind of clued in and it's been yeah, like yeah. my life. And you I'm knew some of, things, yeah. Because based on what you're saying now, you understand yeah, some things. Yeah, but, but by the same token, you never want to presume you understand everything that he for understands. For sure, for sure, for sure. to sit here and say he has an easy job is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's a lie. You know, we don't know what the fuck this poor dude has to deal with. Yeah. You know what I mean? whether he's serving the British public or working against them, in my opinion, working against them, it's, you don't know what he's dealing with on a day-to-day basis. So yeah. sit there and say, I'll do, my, I'll do your job better than you is, is erroneous because you don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Um, but for me, the first thing I would probably do would snap down on illegal ports of entry to prevent the loss of human life. Do you think that that's, okay, go on. Um, because as soon as it gets public that you've cracked down on that, less people are going to try and make the trip which means more lives saved, right? And then I'll create some kind of policy where essentially you can go to a country before you come to our country to seek asylum if your country's war-torn. Right? Okay. So maybe you can go to France before you come to England if you want to come to England. But, you know but, I mean? but why would the French let people in? That would be a political discussion you'd have to have with the other leader. Yeah. This is what I mean, is to sit here and, and honestly say I'll be able to do it effectively alive. Yeah, yeah. I'll but like, I'm, just, I'm just saying that like if I was France and you're going, hey, um, so 500,000 people want to come to our country, can they come to yours first? I, as a leader, in the interest of my people, I might go, no, not necessarily. This is politics. Do you know what I mean? But this, this is politics, politics, right? This is what I mean. It's like, well... It's such a crazy job, dude. It's, it's, Why like, would anyone want to be a politician, It's dude? so Machiavellian. It's, it's so crazy. Down. Imagine being, so st- like, stuck with that sort of decision. So you get to decide that people can't come into a country. Yeah. You get to this, especially imagine when you're, like, an immigrant and a politician. Yeah. And then you're, like, let's say in the Tory government, and then your job is just to say, like, crack down on immigration. Yeah. And, you, like, I have come to this country from Nigeria, you know? Yeah. So it'll be very difficult for me, naturally, mm. to know want to see more people come in yeah. but you know like in my case I'd wanted to come in you know legally because even when I came here we came legally thankfully but not everyone did not everyone came into these countries legally but I still if people want to get away from their countries for whatever reasons to yeah. come study abroad yeah. or to come get a better life abroad who, are, who am I to say no exactly because that's that's why I'm here I'm here because my family wanted a better you know exactly. they wanted a better Same. life Same. so imagine if Ireland in 2005 in 2005 had said you know you can't come to our country to get this sort of better life that you, well, yeah. I wouldn't be here today yeah exactly Same right side. so like politics is weird dude this is, this is why I'll always sit and say I'm not equipped to do that I'm equipped yeah. to give my opinion because I'm a human being and everyone's allowed to have their opinion but to sit here and say yeah. I know what that person has to deal with on a daily basis yeah. I have no fucking idea so it would be so unfair for me to say I'll be able to do that job better yeah. I wouldn't know where to fucking start I'll be the most inept I'll be the because you, you vote me out in a day you probably put me in jail and yeah. I wouldn't even fucking blame you because I wouldn't know what the fuck I'm doing mm. <laughs> so, you know, do any of them know what they're doing though? Huh? Do any of them know what they're that's, doing? That's very true. And yeah. you're right. A lot of them are, I think, very disconnected from the people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But by the same time, like the one thing I would fix straight away is my connection with the public. Yeah. Like uh, there's a disconnect. I'm not you have to do that. To you. you know what I mean? I need to get some mm-hmm. boots on the ground. Hundred. And I need people to be speaking to the people so I can find out why they're so pissed at me. This yeah. is this is something that, you know, I love podcasts. There's no doubt that I watch a lot of podcasts. Also, sorry to interrupt you. One sure. thing I wanted to say about podcasts is they're this one of the last bastions to the integral, you know, Facts. keeping of civilization Facts. because of the exact reason you stipulated about being Facts. able to have discussions. Facts. You know, um, so I was I was watching a podcast the other day. This time around, I was watching uh, Flagrant. 
with Andrew Schultz. And so they had RFK on, yeah, Robert F. Kennedy. Yeah, he's cool, And man. he's an interesting character. He's cool, man, you know, yeah. his dad, John F. Kennedy, was murdered in such, well, assassinated in such a manner whereby so it's obvious. clear <laughs> that the CIA might have done it. You yeah. know, let's not get conspiratorial on this podcast. But, <laughs> you know, so that's going on. And then they killed his uncle on top of that. So like this, this family has been in the limelight for so many years for one thing. Yeah. His dad got killed. Yeah. Right? That's Anyways, that must be for him. that's besides the point. So now he's wanting to run for president of the US, of the United States. Um, and so they asked him a question. You know, the, 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 the Kennedys come from a very affluent family. You know, it's a very affluent family. Yeah. The granddad was really wealthy. Yeah. I mean, he owned movie theaters. You know, at one point he was in the alcohol game. He just had a lot of money. And then, of course, John F. Kennedy became president. So they're, they're well connected, right? You know, they spend holidays in Aspen. Yeah. You know, they have holiday problem. homes. Holiday homes is normal for this family, <laughs> right? So they asked him a question. You know, you're now running for president. Do you understand the plight of the American people? That's a good question to ask. For, for an elite. Yeah, so it's like asking question. Prince William. Yeah. You know, do you understand the plan? Because naturally, what do you think his answer is going to be? He'd want to say, I do. But exactly. does he really understand what it's That's like to live in Phenom? He doesn't know thing. what it's like to be me. Bro, you this know? is the thing. That's why politics is Bro, is so I, I've never flown first class, you know. Like, yeah. I've never been on a private jet. No, dude. So you don't I, understand I, I what it's like to one. be me. Yeah. Right? But yeah, but a politician will try and convince you yeah. that they understand what it's like to be like a commoner. Mm. That's what the job is, is selling you a dream. This is, but the, 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 the problem that I have with politics is they sell lies. Yeah, okay. and I can't lie. Maybe that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a full time job and lying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why. That's why normal people can't really do it. But anyways, yeah. before you, before you carry on, like his answer was, he said something like, um, "You know," and, and and straight away I knew that this guy knows nothing like what the working class Americans or in our case in the UK working class or the middle class are kind of doing all right. Yeah. Working class people like you and I, yeah. these politicians are out of touch completely with what our, our lives are on a yeah, day to day basis, and so. These are the people that are leading our country. You know, we make up the majority of the country. The elites, I, they call them the 1% for a reason. Yeah. 99% of the people in this country is are us, you and I. So we need our representation. Exactly. So when I'm looking at politics, this is the reason why I don't even really follow politics. It's just like, when I'm not even getting represented, what's the point? Mm. That's, that's why I haven't voted. Yeah, same. I'm I've not getting, nobody cares, nobody cares about me. No, I never voted. But I run a small business that I struggle to run. And I struggle to run because the provisions and the facilities are not in place to support small businesses exactly. in this country. And I'm not complaining because, you know, come hell or high water, I'm going to continue running my business, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, um, thank God for capitalism because at least I know I can start small and grow. Yeah, right? Because then market, if, right? Exactly right. Because yeah. if that was abolished, then I'm fucked. <laughs> you know, but... Um, if we no, were in communist Russia, we'd be fucked. Fucking hell, bro. Might, that's why Uzbekistan, you know. <laughs> that's why, knocked that's why, on the door right now, you, like, <laughs> shut this down. That's why Uzbekistan is like the most miserable place to live in the world. All yeah. those areas, man. It's terrifying. Yeah. But, you know... Um, you know, so, you know, you're going to make this trip back to, back to maybe Africa. Or you're going to go to Asia. Asia. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of other questions before, because yep. I know we haven't got all the time in the world. I feel like this is, this might be one of the last times I ever see you. I know Possibly. I'm going to come visit, but yeah. it's just sad to me yeah. to know that I have a brother that I care about so much, but I might not see you for a while. It's yeah. sad. So I'm really cherishing this moment right now. Yeah, Forget about too. the fact that we're recording a podcast. I don't give nah, a shit. Nah, this, this I just is, like, on a, on a real level, I appreciate the game. It feels like, because you know, the last time we hung out before the pod, we went for coffee, wasn't it? You know, and it was just we cool. Went for food, didn't it? Went for food. Yeah, yeah we went yeah, for yeah. food actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was so beautiful. The man said coffee after saying that he doesn't drink coffee. Uh, well, I would have been drinking <laughs> tea. You didn't have coffee. I didn't have coffee though. No, I, had co- I did have but coffee. But you, you, you invited yeah. me. You said, Daps, let's go out for coffee. Yeah, let's go out for coffee. But yeah. I, what did I order? Tea. Food, yeah. Food, yeah, yeah, exactly. Food and drink. Yeah. Coke Zero or something. Amy. <laughs> so, you know, man, trying to trip me up on my podcast, man. Jeez. No, I don't recall. I don't uh, even uh, have uh, coffee straight up, honestly. You are sorry? I don't recall you having a coffee. No, but I wouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. I know you would have. I do. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but in it, <laughs> Amy, man. <laughs> You know, I, what I really want to say is women. <laughs> yeah, Cancel. women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> women. <laughs> but, um, you know, dude, so I have a couple of questions I really want to ask you because, yeah, you know, you're such an intellectual guy and I, I love asking you certain questions because I just feel like your answers are always fun. Um, so the the one that I wrote down was, I've got a couple. First and foremost, did you see the Joshua and Ngano fight last night? Oh. What are yeah. your thoughts on that, dude? So talk, yeah. to, talk to me on the real level. And I, the reason why I'm asking is because it's so fresh. Now, this podcast will be out by Monday. Yeah. Today's Saturday. Yeah. Um, some people are saying it was a fixed fight. Some people are saying all sorts of things on social media. I want to get your take. 
I don't think it was fixed. Okay, yeah, me neither. I think, I think, just to be clear, I think uh, AJ at one point led too many things. He led too many people to a circle, and then he just went dark and he was like, "Fuck this." Thin the herd, which was the best thing he ever did. Yeah. Um, and now he just seems like a dude on a fucking mission. Yeah. Um, I think Nagano has a great story. I think he's an MMA fighter, not a boxer. Yeah, yeah. And fact, I think right. boxing is a different sport to Completely MMA. different. Different sport, different gloves, different rules, different rounds. And I think Nagano just realized the levels of the game mm. last night. It's like you can't just be fighting top five heavyweight dudes thinking, you know, because you had a good stint against Tyson Fury that you'd be square. Mm. AJ fucked him up. <laughs> like, dropped him on his ass three times. Second round. And like, so. came out the gate once, just straight, boom, right down the middle. And I was just like, bye, bro. So, you know what was interesting about that fight? Handled the loss right? well, though, Nangani. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. I mean, so, leading up to the fight, I was pretty confident that Ngano had that fight. Really? Yeah. Because in my, sort of like in the way that I was thinking, I was thinking this guy is the hardest puncher in the world, right? Yeah. Boy, he's done that in MMA mm. with four ounce gloves, yeah. right? So there's no doubt that this guy can hit, right? Because of the sort of like last four fights that AJ has had, that gave me some doubt. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, the fight, um, Ngano versus... Fury gave me confidence in Ngannou. If gave he could do that, yeah. he gave a lot of people confidence. He's the best boxer but it in the turns world, out yeah. now that when you watch AJ's fight last night, AJ made Fury look bad. Yeah, he, made, he, he, Fury. he did <laughs> what Fury couldn't do in yeah. twelve rounds, bro. Yeah, three, four, or something, didn't he? Or yeah. did it go the full stint? You mean with AJ's fight last night? Yeah, AJ's fight. He knocked him in the second round, bro. So, yeah, that's right. When like three rounds. Second or round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah second round gone. Yeah. But anyways, in that you know, so I'm looking at Ngannou going. I love AJ. I've I've kind of always like. Respected AJ. Yeah, me too. He's I just, don't know if I, I can say I love him, but well. yeah, I can't say I love him. I don't really know the guy, but I've always kind of respected him for like also where he's you know come from, from what for I like come his from like yeah, right. I really respect. I got a lot of time for that. The way he conducts himself is very professional, yeah. very pragmatic, very kind. Some people might say he's a bit arrogant, but you know mm. yeah, that's their opinion. You know, I think you look at a guy like that, <laughs> chiseled, in shape, jacked, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's gonna be people. I mean, certain like, girls might say that is a bit arrogant, <laughs> I mean. but like, hey, of course you're gonna get someone what, being what, like, "What do you say? What do you know?" Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, nah, dude. Like, I think he's a square away guy. Yeah. So coming into the fight, I was like a bit worried. Um, I actually, um, I just want to confess that I betted against him. I betted. I spent ten pounds betting on Ngannou that I lost. Don't Ngannou bet six hundred thousand on himself. <laughs> <laughs> did he? So Can you do that? Drake did. Yeah. Wait, wait, are you saying Ngannou did or... Ngannou, I think Ngannou placed the bet on himself to win. I don't think he can do that. You're not allowed to do that, sure. You can't do that. Or maybe he did it through a third party like Usman or something. What, like Drake? <laughs> on purpose. That's wild. Yeah, 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 that's a level like, of confidence. And that's another... So, that's the I, belief he has though. Can I... That's all right. But, yeah. you know, that's what I believe sometimes that's gets you in trouble. That's why they he even lost because it's That's what I believe can get you in trouble. So, I text... Yeah. I text one of my... Yeah, the Drake curse, that needs to be studied. Because that needs we need so, we need someone to do we need someone to do a compilation of every time Drake plays the bet <laughs> yeah. on a sports event yeah. and you know or a team or a fight and that that person lost we need to like oh, see yeah, a compilation bro. but I have this <laughs> so one of my one of my bros here he's a really really sound guy man um, shout out to Craig um, and he's my boy he actually knows Usman no shit yeah bro Damn. he knows Usman I, I think he dated I might get this wrong I think he dated Usman's sister's best friend. Damn. So he used to live in the US, but he lives in Sunderland now. Yeah, yeah. So he's a good guy. I talked to him. He knows a lot about fighting. So, and I, you know, I should listen to him more because he's always right. I've noticed now that when it comes to the UFC, he said things that are always right. So I messaged him last night, right? I said, I said, um, what are you saying, my bro? Um, I'm guessing it's in Gano's night tonight, innit? Yeah. And then he goes, more than likely, but I believe it might be Joshua, right? Now, I'm like fully confident that Ngannou's going to do it. Then I went, really? Why? And he said, Joshua's got a new trainer. He looks a lot sharper. Francis is getting a little bit ahead of himself. And I went, I hear you. This was a minute before the fight. Yeah. Brav, when that second round knockout happened, <laughs> it was like I told you, didn't I? But yeah. he's always spot on with these sort of things. Because yeah. I was like, I should have spoken to him earlier. I was like fully on Ngannou. And then he was like, no, Joshua is a, he's just looking sharper. Yeah, he's looking and he's different. a boxer. It's yeah. like, you can't say someone has boxed for 30 fights. And then someone's done two. It's like the exact same thing that happened with um, um, when McGregor fought Mayweather. It's yeah. like you you can't have 49 <laughs> fights yeah. 
and be daft. You, you have to be good at it, right? Now, if yeah. it was reversed and it was in MMA, that's a different day. That's yeah, a different story different, for different AJ. Story but I think, yeah, I think and AJ I think, did his thing. I think like uh, Joshua, the way he, he thinned his circle on purpose because the noise is getting to him. You could see yeah. him. Thinned it. And he's taking no shit of press. He didn't even like, celebrate yesterday. No, nah, he was just like, just chilling. Know, it was like, whatever. Nah. It is, is not a big deal, what it is. Right? To, to him, that's like, uh, I'll take it a pro rugby. That's like a pro rugby player running over a schoolboy. I like his approach now to fighting because he's obviously made a lot of money. So Joshua is not worrying about money anymore. Nah, he's made a lot of legacy money. Legacy now. Yes. But what I like about him now is it's just like, like you said yesterday, I might be here for another five years. I just want to fight. I just want to prove that I can yeah. do this and that I want to get better. When you have that mindset of, I'm not worried about money. I'm not worried about what... And now he doesn't seem to care about what social media says anymore mm. because a lot of fighters get a lot of hate. Yeah. Israel Adesanya is no stranger to the kind of hate yeah. that you can like like amass from social media when they hate you or hate what you do. Yeah. You know, they'll call easy a guy that runs in the octagon and this and that. It's like, mate, you've never stepped in a ring in your life. You can't give, just call give, fighters out. Go spar with him and then <laughs> yeah. call him out. Like, and, then, and then say yeah. he's running around. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, so I don't like, like that. But a lot of fighters are getting hate online. Very soon, that'll be you and I. You see yeah. podcasts like this, we've said things that people are not going to like, you know, yeah. and then they're going to start saying, that daps is dumb as fuck or whatever they're going to say, right? And I can't pay attention to that <laughs> yeah. because why literally, you? why would you? It's dumb. That's a like, because the one resources. thing is, is that a lot of people are not going to say that shit to my face anyway. Well, not only that, like, why on earth? Like, David Goggins said it best. You'll never meet a hater that's doing better than you. Facts. You never will. You'll always meet people who live in their little silo and they won't want to hear a conversation that has yeah. two various points of view that can be polarizing. So mm. what? That's yeah. how you educate yourself, guys. Mm. Not by listening to one thing that you only want to hear, but by actually studying the other side, you know, staring into the abyss, one would say. Yeah. And if you don't do that, you're never going to fucking learn, mm. in my personal opinion. So, like, for me, if I study, you know, the good in the world, unfortunately, I make myself study the evil. Yeah. And that's the hard part, is you have to look at both sides and realize, okay, you're capable of both. Yeah. Learn to keep one sheathed. Learn to keep the other where it needs to be. Mm. And that's courage and that's bravery. I don't think it's brave for someone to say, I've been a good person my whole life, so you've never been tempted. So mm. you don't know what you're capable of. Yeah. So I don't think that is a good person. I just think that's ignorance or naivety. Yeah. In my opinion. You know, I think, you know, to be a good person, you have to understand the, the true evil you're capable of. Yeah. Strive to do the adverse every single day. Yeah. You know, and have that as a, that integration, as Jung would call it, the integration of the shadow. Mm -hmm. Have that for when it's necessary. Someone yeah. raids your house, the shadow needs to come out. Mm. You know what I mean? But if you don't have that under control then you're a weak man and yeah. they're extremely dangerous or a weak woman and they're extremely dangerous. And I've seen you control yourself yeah. in situations. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're not going to get into that. <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to ask you was, um, so the other day I was thinking this like weird thought about like the importance of words, like the, like the real actual importance of saying a word either to yourself or to somebody else and so on and so forth. And it made me think, okay, and this is, the reason why I'm asking you this question is because it made me think and um, what do I think is the most important word in the English language and why? Right. So think about that for a sec, right? So this is one of those weird conversations that you and I used to have back in, you know, back in the day in the gym. Where I'd be like, yo, Ryan, what do you think is the most, you know, important word in the English language and why? I've, I've still not thought about it, but I just wanted to like see where your mind takes you, you know, and see where we come out of it from the other end. From. Either yes, no, or any adjective. Yeah? Yeah. So yes, no. Yeah. Or any adjective. Yes. It's because an adjective will give you clarity and context. It will right. describe what the, the the thing is. Yeah. Right. So a noun will give the name. Yeah. Place or thing. Yeah. Place or thing. Adjective will describe yeah. what that is. What you're doing. Exactly. Clarity, context, and understanding. Yeah, yeah. And I think yes and no are extremely powerful words. Learning when to say no. Learning when to say yes. Yeah. Is extremely imperative. Hmm. Those would those would be the words that I would say are the most powerful. Most powerful, right? Yeah. Like if you can if you can so storytelling is probably one of the most important things and skills every person has to develop, whether you're a businessman, whether you're a coach, whether you're a human being, because that's the most effective way to, one, get someone to remember something, mm -hmm. two, to actually describe what's going on, and three, to actually anchor it to something of importance so the person can remember it. Mm -hmm. So being able to tell a story is extremely imperative, as long as it's grounded in truth. Yeah, You know, if you, if you can't do that, yeah, fuck, that's why I have an email list and developing an email list on purpose because what you can learn in a story, in one story, is more than you can learn 
in a lifetime a lifetime of just studying fucking bullet points yeah you know um, and being able to articulate that effectively and efficiently mm -hmm. will allow you the ability to be understood mm. that's what everyone wants yeah everyone wants to be understood yeah right and if someone doesn't understand it gives them more clarity context and understanding around it mm -hmm. the story wasn't detailed enough mm. plain and simple so mm. being able to tell a story is one of the most important things so you're so, that's why you told stories as a kid Mm -hmm. If I tell you a story now, you're more likely to remember the thing I told you the story about than yeah. I didn't. Yeah. You know, so it's extremely imperative to be able to do that. And if you can't do that, that's a skill you need to learn. And you can only yeah. learn that through reading. Yeah. Reading is the most imperative thing. You once told me that, and you've said it even before this podcast had it, that, you know, you would read a book like five or six times yeah. just to extrapolate the information yeah. from it. You know, um, I've heard you say things like, you know, you, you seem to remember quotes from like books you've read like years and years and years and years ago. You know, that's something I'm trying to get into now is quotes and stuff. Yeah. I'm even writing some of mine. That's dope. Yeah? Must. Would you like to hear some? Yeah, let it rip. Give me your top two. That I've just written recently. Yep. Okay, so I thought about this one because I want you to do some as well. I want you to do some of the ones that you've got from the books you've read. Um, yeah, and stuff like that because I know you've got a ton, yeah. right? And, and one of the ones you told me that I never forgot when you did a podcast twice was the essence of humanity. The essence is, of the human experiment is the better. Oh, of bro, it's so sick. The <laughs> essence of the human experiment is the better. Wait, wait, let me, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I remember. The essence of the human experiment is the... Oh, 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 oh. Experience. The magic. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me. Let me, let me do it again. The essence of the human experiment... Nope. Uh, no, no, no. Hey, the essence... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't know what this big guy is doing to me, man. Too much sugar. <laughs> this this big guy is fucking Amy, did up. You spike it, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the essence of the human experience is the betterment of their fellow man. Yeah, it's the betterment of the fellow man. Isn't it? Yeah. 100%. The essence of the human experiment. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? Yeah. The essence of the human experience is the betterment of their fellow man. Yeah, that's one. That's one. Yeah. But, but I like that one a lot because I, I've said it so many times. I don't know why I forgot on this podcast, but I've, I've said it so many times and I like it because it's true. If you want to um I you know what I used to say before? I used to tell everyone that, look, humanity is all about helping people. But I don't even tell people that anymore. Like what I do now is I just say that my experience in life is to help people. Because your experience in life or your, you know, um, what your purpose in life might be different to mine. Because I used to go around telling everyone, oh, you know, you have to help people. But what if your thing is not to help? What if your thing is to, I don't know, do something else? Well, help and servitude are the same thing. Right? Okay. So, well, I guess um, if you look at it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'm here to serve. Yeah. And who do I serve? People who need the help. Yeah. You know, so it goes back to that old adage of um, a Japanese theory of ikigai. Right. Which is purpose and completion, which is you have to find a purpose, something mm -hmm. you truly love to do. It has to be to the betterment of the community around you. Yeah. You have to be passionate about it and you have to be able to money off it. Yeah. If you nail those four things down, you've achieved what the one would call ikigai. Which right. Which is a balance of doing something you love, earning money for it while making a difference in the world. I guess you're right, dude, because at the end of the day, helping and service is the same thing. And even if you create a product that helps people, it still kind of helps, yes. even though you're monetizing from it in a way. But this is, service. This, is, this is the issue that I have with, with people and money. Right. There is nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's nothing wrong with earning good money off the back of helping people if it's ethical, genuine, mm -hmm. and you're actually competent and good at it. You yeah. should be compensated for your service mm -hmm. if you're not being compensated for your service you're devaluing yourself and the very essence of what it is you produce mm -hmm. right because if i was like i'm going to drop my price for someone yeah that's devaluing the quality of what i can produce for yeah. no reason other than other people's scarcity mindset yeah there is uh, people will hate on the rich because they're rich because they don't have it right I know multi-millionaires who've built multiple businesses off the back of just helping people. And you'll, they'll, they'll get hate being like, why are you posting your Lamborghini? It's to show you that you can live a fucking good life and still help people. Mm -hmm. Get that into people's heads. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think... It's not necessarily to show off. It's just to... No, it's to show you, hey, you can still... You, this is the problem is you can still be happy and yeah. serve a purpose that's helping others yeah. and live a financially brilliant lifestyle. Yeah. And if people of a rage and hate you for that, they're not the kind of people you want around you. Those are people who would like to stay in the mire. Yeah. They don't want to see someone financially succeed or grow. Yeah. And, you know, for example, with the coaching, I never have an ethical dilemma when it comes to saying, okay, well, this is the amount. That ever, you're, yeah. ever, ever, ever. Because I'm not, even if it's not like, not even a little ethical, e, because the person who's the biggest benefactor from signing on that dotted line is the client. Yeah. 
right, is the client, without a shadow of a doubt. And yeah. what they get for what they pay is tenfold. Yeah. You know, you should be charging way more. Mm-hmm. But I don't because there's certain people who won't be able to afford that yeah. currently. Mm. Right. But by the same token, I never have an ethical dilemma of asking for money. Yeah. Because it's you know what you're worth. For it, you know, yeah. it's, and one, I know my worth. And two, I know that the biggest benefactor is them. Is them. I may be I may be better off, yes, but the biggest benefactor is gonna be you. You're gonna you're gonna gain mastery of your thoughts, emotions, and understanding of your body and how to essentially utilize it to the best of your degree. Which is gonna help them, essentially. It's gonna help them, help you get ahead in the workplace. That's gonna help you. You're gonna earn more money, right? You're yeah. gonna earn more money than you spent on me, tw- twofold, threefold. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're going to learn how to mitigate stress, how to actually live a life where you can actually enjoy with purpose, balance, while enjoying the food you love. Mm-hmm. You're also going to be a better mother for your kids, yeah. a better leader in the workplace, a more efficient, effective, articulate individual. Mm-hmm. These are things money can't buy. Yeah, These are things that, for all intents and purposes, cost hundreds of thousands yeah. of pounds, if not millions. Yeah. But by the same token, you're saying, this is what you can be. Are you willing to take action toward it? Yeah. And if you're not, that's fine. I'm not going to hate on you for that. But one day you'll come around and go, shit, I should have done that sooner. Yeah. And I'll say, that's okay. And you came around at some point. You know what I mean? That makes a lot of sense. You're essentially helping people help you to help themselves. To you just It goes around Self-aid in circles. Buddy, right? You know what I mean? Like, if you can't look after yourself, don't expect yourself to be able to look after other people. Okay. So let me give you my quote, yeah? Yeah. This right. is one that I've written. I can't remember all of them. But this one I remember because um, I was thinking about it just now as well. Um, because, like, we're living in a world that seems to be so divided at the moment. That's why I've thought about this. So I, 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 um, I wrote... Um, for everyone who um, is a little bit uncertain about life for whatever reason at the moment, you will find similarities in the disparity. Fucking true. That's beautiful. I don't know why I thought about that, but because I was Very looking beautiful. at arguments from every side on, on, on a lot of topics, yeah. whether that's politics, pharmaceuticals, you know, aviation, culture, everything, right? Religion, mm. sex. Yeah. And I was like, damn. So sometimes it's apparent that things can be closer than they seem if you look at the differences. Mm. Like the difference between you and I, right, is not that much of a difference if you actually look at you and I because yeah. you will see more similarities. More similarities and differences without doubt. So, but look at look at I, how much we enjoy the differences of one another. You're Nigerian, right? Yeah. And how we always talk about Nigerian yeah, 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 culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So appreciating the differences is where yeah. you can actually find the similarity itself. So let's be silly for yeah. a minute. Yeah. And the reason why this made more sense to me is because I was thinking about it like this, right? So you, let's say people, let's say you and I started to argue about something petty or silly or stupid. And nothing is really that stupid, but yeah. you never know, right? Because yeah. it might be stupid to me. Or you, it's just it's just completely know. relative, yeah, yeah, right? Of course. But if you start to look at similarities, so let's just even start from what we can see. You're a man. I'm a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're probably around the same age. Middle-aged adults. Yeah. Right. Um, you like to exercise. You're slightly bigger. Yeah. I like to exercise yeah, my own little train. way. Yeah. I like to train my own little way. Yeah. You like to read books. Well, I don't really like reading books, but I prefer to listen to audio. You like the you know pursuit I mean? of knowledge. Pursuit of knowledge, exactly but in a different way. Exactly. So when you start to look at the similarities in yeah. the disparity, you'll be able to actually solve the initial problem. I agree. I completely agree. I think it's a beautiful quote, man. How did it take you to think that out? I, it didn't take me long. It just came, come, yeah. Come a couple of them are starting to come to me like that. I don't know why. And I just write them down um, and I just kind of like, but it was so random as well because I was I was thinking about arguments and I was thinking about debates and I was thinking yeah. about why people disagree so much, you know, and I was thinking about that beautiful quote, you know, the essence of the human experience yeah. is the betterment of their, betterment of their fellow man. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I keep tripping up. But anyway, um, that really got me thinking that, you know, we've, I think I, you start to step into an age where you start to become a little bit more f- philosophical. 100%. You know, you start to become, I don't know when I was, you know, 25, 26, 27, I didn't care about being philosophical. And I'm not trying to be now, Yeah. but like, you know, I'm spending- You will inadvertently by accident. You're just It's weird. Like you start to get wisdom the older you get. It's real, dude. Like when people used to tell me, oh, you'll be, you know, the older you get, the wiser you should be. Yeah. You know, my mom used to say that a lot. Yeah. The older you get, the wiser you should be. And I'm like, what that. are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah, she's right. <laughs> she's right, dude. She's dead right, man. And I'm only 32. Could you imagine when I'm 52? But think about the kind of wisdom you're going to offer your kids then. Yeah, true, true. Think about the balanced perspective they'll have. Think I don't think, probability and you know what's weird, dude? I, I still don't think I'm wise. Just so, For anyone that's listening or watching, I'm not saying I'm wise. I'm not saying anything at all. I'm just saying that I'm stepping into an era in my life where I'm starting to be a little bit more cognizant about the little things. I'm, I'm making notes of them and I'm trying to internalize what's actually happening around me. Why, and I'm would, trying why to, would you telling people you've gotten wise would be a bad thing? 
You were sorry? Why would telling people you've got wise would be a bad thing? You should be yeah. proud of that. that I know. Be celebrated. I know. You I shouldn't know. have to feel like you need to tread on eggshells saying, oh, guys, I'm, I'm not saying I'm wise. It's nothing yeah. wrong with being wise. And look, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not intelligent, but by the same token, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm Einstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, know, I'm the, definitely the more, exactly, Einstein. The more intelligent you get, the more yeah. you realize you don't know things. Yeah. And the more you turn in turn look at them, yeah. hence the philosophical approach to life as you yeah. get older. For sure. Yeah, you know, I appreciate you calling me out on that. I appreciate that. But, you know, this is more about you. So, you know, so you've left me with that beautiful quote that I'll never forget, even if I trip up on it sometimes. Yeah. But I want to see what you have for me now. So, embrace what's inspired being, you? Embrace being the fool. Ah, that works perfectly for be me. The fool. Always be the fool. Like if you look at a tarot card, you know those fortune reader cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the fool on the card. The fool is smiling and joking. Now, why must you embrace being the fool? Because at every juncture of life, you're in a hierarchy. Okay? There is a hierarchy. Now, you need to embrace the structure of the hierarchy that you're in in order for you to rise to the top of said hierarchy. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you're a waiter, okay, and you're constantly pissed off that you're a waiter, Right? You're not accepting your proper place in the current hierarchy, which mm -hmm. is preventing you from actually going further. So you're not embracing the role of the fool, which is, I don't know enough about this. I'm not good enough at this to raise myself to a different level in terms of, in terms of the societal structure or hierarchy that I'm based in. Mm -hmm. So in turn, I need to embrace being the fool. Now, when you embrace being the fool, what essentially happens is you embrace the idea that you don't know everything and that you will always learn. Now, I knew my training inside and out, right? Did I know how to run a business effectively and efficiently? No, not a fuck. So guess what? I found people who were smarter than me and I said, I'm a fool. I said, I don't know this, 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 this. They were like, this is shit that they fucking internalized. They like know this shit backwards. Mm -hmm. And they would be like, cool, okay. Da, da, da. Now, if you don't embrace being a fool, you're never going to embrace your ability to constantly progress up that hierarchy. Now, mm -hmm. every society is ordered in a hierarchy, whether you like it or not. So mm -hmm. just deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you want to get to the top of that hierarchy. To do that, you have to embrace being the fool. Mm. And to be the fool means to say, I don't know anything. Teach me. Help me. Teach me. Right. Yeah. And, it, and, and allowing that to come forth shows a level of gratitude and humility for those who have knowledge that you don't. Now, the knowledge yeah. that others have that you don't is finite. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas staying in your own microcosm of your subjective narrative and saying you know everything is infinite and it'll get you nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you walk forever and be in the same fucking place, right? So you've got to embrace being the fool. That's one of the biggest things ever for mm -hmm. me is embrace being the fool because it's the best place to be because you'll learn the quickest and it's temperance of ego. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say another one is the one that kind of hits me is the ego cuts deeper than the flesh. Mm -hmm. In other words, you attack someone's ego, it'll hurt a lot more than if you punch them in the face. You know, so understanding that people all have levels of ego. Now, people, I've seen this with, with some of the career-driven business professionals that I work with. They all get on a call me and say, my boss has this big ego. And I'm like, dude, you're so lucky. They're like, what? I'm like, you know, he, every single time he's shitting on you at work, he's showing you, or she, in this case, it was a he, he's showing you something about his personality. So you know he's got a big ego, right? Yeah, yeah, I know he's got a big ego. Okay, sweet. So <laughs> next time, do you, does it bother you that he's taking credit for what you're doing, even though you're getting paid double the amount you did your previous job? No, it doesn't bother me. Okay, cool. So next time you're in a meeting, it comes out and he says, me and this person develop, they say, no, no, boss, it was your idea. Now, all of a sudden, you're not creating an antagonistic relationship, but a, a relationship that's conducive to growth. Now, this guy's a CEO, okay? Yeah. Now, what that does is now you're building a relationship with this guy, playing to his ego, in turn, getting you ahead in the hierarchy of the business structure, he'll be like, hey, X person, come to this meeting, walk me through what you think of this. Because he knows that you're going to play to his ego, so he knows he's going to like it, so he's going to like you, right? In turn, allowing you to get a bit of leverage to say, hey, I can do X, Y, and Z, right? And people always say, oh, you know, my boss is always broken. Good, okay. You know what the best thing you can do when your boss berates you? That the best thing that'll literally flip the whole relationship on its head be like, Roger that boss, let me just get a notepad and pen out and let me just quickly note down what you said so I don't miss it. That boss would be like, mm. that's it. Mm. He won't look at you and be like, what a fucking loser. He'll look at you and go, damn, this person wants to learn. This person wants to climb that ladder. And then guess who's next in line when they're looking at all their employees and staff? The person he likes that always taking notes and looks extremely diligent and is hitting the mark as necessary. Mm. So, when people talk about things like this, you know, the ego cuts deep into the flesh. Yes, it does. If you went to him and said, you got a fucking weak ego, mate. 
Woo! Yeah. Expect a visceral reaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? It hurts way worse. Can I ask you this, right? So with ego, if you have to work with someone that you genuinely just can't stand and in a in a sort of like in a capacity where you're doing the work, you're frontline, you're doing the work. They facilitate the work, right? Is this making sense? So mm-hmm. kind of like in the dynamic of like a manager and, you know, a member of staff. Yeah, okay. or a presenter uh-huh. and a producer cool. or, a pre- or a presenter and a promoter actually. Yeah, promoter, presenter. The promoter doesn't have enough appreciation for, for the presenter. But the presenter has done enough to attract appreciation. He's mm-hmm. done a good job or they've done a good job mm-hmm. rather. Another job's come up and the promoter has decided not to call this presenter, right? The one that he's currently working for, let's say. Yes. Okay. So the presenter doesn't see the need to go to, to the promoter now. There's a new show in town basically and the presenter is not is not excited about it because they've worked with them before. They've never been appreciated the way they should have been. The so they've just, no, yeah. So the presenter has never been appreciated the way they should have been the because promoter. because the promoter puts the presenter on. Yeah. So yeah, the promoter okay. is the manager. Right. The presenter so in the terms is of the employer. hierarchical structure. Promoter is promoter, yeah, presenter, presenter. Got you. Right. Okay. So presenter is doing a great job. Promoter doesn't really see it. Presenter decides to kind of go his own way. That's a good one. I'm gonna take my top off for this one. Yeah. Not, not gonna get naked all the <laughs> Let's get my stringer out. Fucking hell, bro. I've got to. Jesus I'm Christ. Like I'm sweating like a whore. No wonder you can just walk up to any girl and just talk to them, man. No. Fucking hell. <laughs> I wish it worked <laughs> that way. <laughs> Does it not? Nope. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so carry on about um, presenter promoter. So, presenter has gone off and started doing his own thing now because it's from a place of, because one could say it's ego. One could say it's ego, okay. but one could also say the presenter doesn't want to beg the attention of said promoter, this presenter is going to go their own way, not because they don't acknowledge the promoter, but because they've not been appreciated so many times that they're just happy to do their own thing. And they believe that they will get to wherever they're going to get regardless of how they're treated in the circle of promotion. Does this make sense to you? So do you then go back and call that promoter and go, hey, I see you've got a show on. I want in. I want to do it. Because normally what would happen is, is that the promoter will get on the phone and go, hey, What's your schedule saying for this date? I've got a show coming on. But he right? hasn't, the, the but he hasn't, hasn't done, done that. that. So how do you separate your ego from that sort of dynamic, from that from that situation where it's like, does the presenter just go off and do the other thing and just carry on with life? Or do they go back to the presenter, uh, sorry, to the promoter and go, hey, look, I still want in regardless of how you're going to treat me. Or, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's so, like, how do you separate your ego? Because sometimes it's difficult to work with people that you can't, sort of like stand being around. You don't you don't have a resentment yeah. towards them, but you just you it's just know, difficult to work with. You know that your energy and yours don't align in certain situations. And you don't you don't want any more of it. It's not so much that you're being egotistical. It's just so much more of do you know what? I can handle myself from this point on and I'll prove myself eventually over time without yeah. working with you. Yeah. What I would say is in that situation, you want to have a look at a few things. Why? So firstly, why did the team dynamic break down? That's number one. Right? Yeah. Now, if it broke down because this person and the other person weren't vibing. There's okay. a lack of appreciation as well. Okay. So with a lack of appreciation, to put it simply, why is it you feel the need for external validation in the first place? So, you if, know. If he's, so let, let's say the promoter is, is hitting the, the key performance indicators that are conducive to growth in the business. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if he's doing that and you're doing your end, yeah. who gives a fuck if you don't like one another? Okay. Now, the problem comes into play if mm. there is a culture mm. in the workplace and you want to build a good culture. That means you only want good people around. Yeah. Okay. And in my opinion, culture in the workplace is imperative. That's why I only work with people I like. Yeah. Work with people I don't like. Yeah. It's very hard to get a vested interest into someone that I don't fucking like. Yeah. Right. So that's the first thing. The next thing is, if your ego is in the way, you should know, right? There needs to be self-awareness of, okay, this is my ego popping up. You know what I mean? This is mm-hmm. my ego not popping up. Because if you don't have awareness of when it is, the ego is a very clever, sneaky little fucking thing where it will synonymize itself with who you are and you won't even realize it's your ego. Mm-hmm. And then when someone actually attacks who you are, which is synonymous with your ego and your ego is under attack, they'll th- you'll think that they're actually attacking your self-worth and identity. Mm-hmm. Because unfortunately, your ego has kind of nested itself in your own psyche of your identity. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
in this situation, the first thing you want to find out is, okay, well, you didn't like working with one another. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, that's cool. If you want a good culture in the workplace, you only want to work with people you like. Fair yeah. enough. Now, if you can work with this person and you don't hit them up because of the relationship essentially degrading because there was a lack of effective communication, because even with someone with an ego, effective communication, you can start to kind of use that to your advantage to make you effective. Mm -hmm. You want to then look at it and go, okay, well, why won't I call him? What if you have? They haven't even returned your call. So they, they lack proper communication skills. So they, There's a lot to unpack here. Basically, yeah. basically, I think from this presenter's point of view, they've just identified that certain people are difficult to work with and it's got nothing to do with the fact that they can't work with people. It's just that you, you can identify... You have a personal preference and you're allowed to have that. Like, why, why does everyone think that it's not okay to have that? Yeah, right. And there's clients, I will, like, I've been on calls with clients, not clients, prospects, and I've been like, I won't work with you. Okay, so yeah, I Sorry, think I think that's where we need to take that to. So it's integrity, like integrity, integrity is imperative. So you can decide that you, yeah, okay, it's your thank choice. you. That's that's what yeah, that's it, that's it's your choice. That's that's okay. Also for me. remember, someone who has a big ego, very easy to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you just play to it. Yeah, yeah, super simple. You know, that's the thing, though, is, is that like you know, some people would say, yeah, well, you're egotistical. You should be able to work with everyone, regardless of how they act and behave. You should be able to deal with everyone, but it doesn't mean you have to work with everyone. Right. Yeah, well, there you go, right? That That's the key word that you should be able to deal with everyone because, with because everyone, if yeah. said presenter saw said promoter, they'll still talk, they'll still say hi, it's still civil, exactly. it's not on site. But when it comes to professional work and relationships, it's just the dynamics if it's, if isn't there. effective, stop it. Yeah. Like if, if I... If and I'm talking about myself, by the way. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. Metaphors out the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's all coming out on this podcast. Yeah, so in, said in promoter. My... I appreciate you, but you know, <laughs> it, dude. Listen, at we the can't end of work the day, together anymore. Yeah, at the end of the day, this is what it is, right? Yeah. And it, that doesn't mean any. He's not going to watch this anyway. I don't if, think. To be honest, if you do, whoever this dude is, if you do take offense from a check your ego. Yeah, um, that's your answer. I feel like you see this is so, and you may not like to hear that if your ego is big, but if your ego is not big, this you can take it on the chin. This on, you, this conversation at this particular juncture is, I work with so many promoters. I don't even think any one of them will know who it is that I'm talking about. But I think what's important to note is um, I have nothing but love and respect for this said person. If I see them, I'll, we would talk. Mm. It's just from some of the work that we've done in the past, certain things lacked that I would have loved to see happen. And I've tried so hard over the past couple of shows to help bring th you know some things to life. And yeah. It just never happened. Yeah. And I think it's because they have a very strong personality also. So they have a strong understanding of where they want to go and how they want to go about things. And I think sometimes it's okay for you to, for me, even in my position to respect that. Yeah. Because then they can, with wanting more because, for and going for it, yeah, because then they can be a clash. Yeah. Because I also have a certain standard and expectation on the way I want to do things. So I want this to come across as there's no beef, there's no hate. It's just more of a, sometimes I think it's okay to understand where you're also going as a person. Okay. And, you, you don't have to burn bridges, but you can kind of like carve your own path and your own direction. And it's got yeah. nothing to do with hate, right? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's what I was trying to get like to. There, there, there should be no harboured ill no, will. And no. if, if there is... It shouldn't be coming from me because it will, it's all love. Yeah, so this is the point. But, but, but I want to be able to talk about things. Because exactly. that's the whole point of doing this. Dude, look at Cat Williams on Joe's podcast. Hey! Say the fuck that was a fucking want. good podcast. Exactly. You because, know why? Because he just talked. And he fucking <laughs> decided that he was going to say exactly how he fucking yeah. felt. Did you see him run himself? like a 4.9? Yeah, uh, insane. Like, like a 50-yard like dash, 40-yard dash. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. 4.9 seconds. Listed. Uh, yeah, dude, like, at I 52 think, years old. I think, lot, I think a lot of what Kevin says is a lot of truth. And I think with regards to this ego Do situation. Do you think that Kevin Hart is a plant by yes. Hollywood? Is a Hollywood plant? Yeah. Do you really think so? Yeah, I, I genuinely take what Kat said on that podcast. Why true. do you think Kevin Hart might be a plant? Huh? Why do you think Kevin Hart might be a plant? Because, well, they probably looked at him and were like, okay, cool. And just took, I don't know why they would have taken him as a plant. Like, I'm not into the the, the whole stand up side of things, but yeah, yeah. I do think he is. Well, because it's like his, his, his claim to fame, like, and sort of like how quickly he was able to rise in the industry. You know, yeah. he's come from New York. So, like, I don't want to get into it too much, but basically, like, LA is where everything happens. That's yeah, where Hollywood especially is. The comedy stuff. So, when people are coming from New York, you're a newbie, essentially. So, there are people in the scene already, like Hart, but they, they like hadn't, the OGs. but they hadn't risen up. Yeah. Kevin comes and does everything that they could never do in a blip of time. 
right? Yeah. What Kat was saying is, is that in order for you to do that, certain things need to be done to certain Hollywood execs. Like, suck your dick. Yeah. yeah, this is the thing, or, or, or getting your dick sucked. Because exactly. remember he said, he didn't want Harvey Weinstein to suck his dick. dick. Yeah, and then it all came out as well. So <laughs> you've got to be like... This be, podcast is going in. <laughs> you got to be straight up and honest. you got to be yeah. straight up. So, I, I so, he so is. he's cat he's saying that to get in 10, you know... Fucking um, what do you call like blockbuster movies? To get into like, I mean, how many movies has Kevin Hart done? Quite a lot, right? So many, dude. but so many really good ones as yeah, well. Yeah. He's been in Jumanji with The Rock. So yeah. to get into some of those, movies, is he is he insinuating that there are certain things you have to? And we know that this is true because Harvey Weinstein was you know convicted of you know he was he was me too, wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it? For doing stupid shit to women, you know. And so. we know that Hollywood is not particularly the most holy place or holiest of places. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood, not very holy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, up. so it's like it makes you wonder if Kevin is a plant. I don't know that he is you obviously don't know either but it makes yeah. you wonder that it's cat telling the truth in the sense that like if people if because the industry can decide to put certain pl- people in certain places Always, yeah. at certain times <laughs> to to promote a narrative kevin hart if he really is a plant is perfect for the black community isn't it is this ideal? guy is black just like you is ideal. you can achieve what he's done but can you really yeah if so he's a plant i, I think what cat was saying is like you can do it that way or you can put in the fucking work like i did yeah, and but then, Friday after next, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's clearly a great talent, but like yeah. he doesn't. You don't. You don't tend to go as far. Yeah, yeah. This is that there will. There'll if be the industry more pushes, yeah. If the industry pushes yeah. you, you go way further. Yeah, so like there'll be more roadblocks to your success than but there like, would be. But it's like, are you willing to give up your integrity or yeah, not? Yeah, 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 that's your call. I, I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know if Kevin Hart is a plant. I don't know. I think Cat had a thing to lose, bro. I think Cat was just being like straight just down the line, telling like, it how it is. You know what? I'm sick of seeing the shit. Yo, yeah. Shannon. <laughs> yeah. Let's, Let's talk. Let's talk. You know what's crazy about you know, that as well, dude? You know, I'm fucking getting excited. You know what's crazy about that? Yeah, is as well as is that like no one came out and said he was wrong. Because you know, not usually when no, someone they just they just the egos just came out. Oh, maybe I need to do my rebreeze like uh, Tiffany Haddish's thing and like Kevin Hartson. We just promoted no one, movie. No, no one actually said, no one said that Cat was wrong for no what he said. The so that means that Cat must be telling the truth. This is the thing, and Cat's a very very intelligent guy. Yeah. You know, he was homeless way before anyone else yes, was, yes, you know yes, what yes, I mean? Yes. And he came from a really difficult background. Yeah. The dude fucking made it. Like, yeah, yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he is hilarious. Yeah. I watch all his specials. Ticket sales after that podcast through the roof. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. No yeah, yeah. No his, shit, yeah, yeah. Like, his, his, his next story is going to be absolutely insane. Yeah. But, you know, to wrap this bad bitch up, um, this has been an incredible experience with you, dude. Um, always, always is, man. I love you, dude. Oh, bro. We'll definitely do more. <clears throat> yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. You could do some virtual shit as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, you know, goodbye. So it's goodbye for now. For sure. It feels that way though. I yeah, can't lie. Because you're course. moving halfway across the world, man. Yeah. Whether that's South yeah. Africa down that way yeah. or Asia, you know, that way. Yeah. And, and I don't know then, I'm pointing in that direction. <laughs> Asia is probably not that way. I think it's one of those things where like one thing I've gone very good at, although it's very difficult, mm-hmm. is learning to let go of that which you fear to lose. And letting people forge their own. Part. You know, you said this on the last podcast. You know, yeah, especially when it comes to relationships, it's hard. That's why you're, you're like you don't mind breaking up. Yeah, it's because hard, it's That's, it's hard, but yeah. you have to be able to let shit go sometimes. You have to be able to forgive the person, let go. Anger is the only poison that you drink, expecting someone else to die from it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's like you can't. But it's all right. Stop. We're not breaking up, dude. We're just you know you're just moving <laughs> fucking far away. No, 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 this is what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was actually referring yeah. to breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you yeah, can't yeah. be angry if you break up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. got their own place in the world, and if it's not with you, tough titties. You know, yeah, to yeah. deal with it. Um, but yeah, I think. I think with with me moving and stuff again, I think it's it's not going to do anything but good for not only my clients, my business, but yeah, me as well. Yeah. The better I do, the better everyone else around me does. Yeah, and that's what matters. You know what I mean. So yeah. at the end of the day, I think it's and you look at the geopolitical spectrum of the place. The intelligent decision would be to move mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've served my time here. You know, I've I've my done God. what I did. I came in here and I dominated my environment. That's cool. Um, and you know I. I can't say the same for my other family members, you know, and it's I've time to, that, it's time to know. go to the next level. It's time, it's time to Just go. before we go. Um, so, you know, I want you to plug your business, um, the incredible work that you do online. Um, so where can people find you, your website, stuff yeah. like that before? We so go. It, all my stuff usually comes to Instagram on my emailing list. So at Ryan Everly on Instagram, read.formphysiques.com is the website. Um, but yeah, when the email list comes out, and stuff like that, subscribe to it because every single week you'll be fucked up with a beautiful story that'll either inspire you, interest you, make you laugh, make you cry, 
make you take action, make you think about some of the things you did. But at the end of the day, it'll do nothing but make you a better individual with a great fucking story with your cup in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, guys. You need to get on that email list. You'll love it. Yeah? Yeah. You'll Sign me it. up right now. I'll do it right after the pod. I'll do it right after the pod. It, Let's do it. Yeah. Um, and Amy as well. Um, yeah, but like <laughs> <straight> <laughs> yeah. but um, for everyone that listened, uh, thank you very much for your eyes and your ears. Um, Ryan you. is one of my closest friends in Newcastle. Um, I love him to bits. Um, and as he said, this is not a final goodbye, no. but this is um, the beginning of new things. Yeah. So we'll They've got stories I'll be able to tell. Fam. Mm. Bro. Fucking Thailand, bro. <laughs> you know, monkeys ride bicycles out there. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, for real. Not I have sure. a video. I can show you a video. Maybe you can show it for me from A to B. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Can't, I ain't got a license. Monkey taxi, bro. That's what you need to get Straight on. Straight up? Straight no, up. Dude. No, no, do they drive heads? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they actually do. I bribe the monkey out the tree <laughs> yeah, like a little yeah, like fucking yeah, like yeah, no, those yeah, yeah. things in the front. Bro, they do a lot of like, weird. Oh, yeah. I don't want to say weird shit, but like they do a lot of random shit out there. Like they get dogs to go buy groceries. They what? give dog. You never seen these videos, bro? Dude, what side dog, of man. the internet are you on? Uh, definitely not that My side. My side is fun <laughs> as fuck, bro. I can send you some fucking videos. But like, it just, it just seems like there's a lot. Of, yeah, it just seems I like think, I think what Asia excites is, me most is, is the spirituality. The spirituality. And, and the culture and the weather's going to be cool. But I, you know me, I love my Muay Thai. Beware of the shemales though. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm probably going to get caught, you know. Be careful with that shit, dude. Yeah, because apparently they're really, really pretty. Yeah. Yes. And they have big dicks. So how the fuck do you discern? I can't be like... Be when, you feel the, when you feel the dick. I'm not getting the head for my bro. <laughs> I'm not saying, t- I didn't say touch it. When you feel it. Yeah. I so when it. she goes in for a hug and you go, what's that? What, I'm going to touch dicks with her? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. we're matching. Crossing swords, baby. That's what it's called. Crossing swords. But no, I'm just saying that like, if she's really fit, she's going in for a hug. Question the narrative. Yes. Okay. Dude, Roger. like you want to fucking question it. Like even before, like insinuate the questioning of the narrative. Be before like, it I know Thailand. I know you're a lady boy. And she'll be like, no, I'm not. I'll be like, awesome. Okay. I'll be like, show me proof. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. I need receipts, bro. Yeah, yeah, for real. Well, guys, I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah. I am not getting fucked tonight. I think, I think it's going to be a beautiful experience. Yeah. Uh, Send me videos, dude. Dude. Uh, Send me be, some weird you'll shit, be updated, man. Like, my Insta like I want to, but I want videos from you of like, like, you know, when you're walking downtown, well, like, you know, start like, a YouTube channel. Dude, start it, man. Mm, yeah, one of those little, like, sticks. What do they call yeah, those so sticks? I've got, I've got, like, cool cameras like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just get one of those sticks. Yeah, dude. I'll just get one of those. Start content, bro. Your YouTube channel is set up already. I've got it set up. I just need to start posting stuff because for me, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, uh, I've got a lot of perspectives on things, not opinionated ones, believe it or not, uh, yeah. educated ones um, that can really, really help people. And yeah. It comes in long form. Yeah. 90 seconds ain't enough to yeah. really, really help you guys. Yeah. And that's actually the premise of, of exactly what I do. Mm-hmm.